Right, I think I'm here. Hello, everyone. So who we got here? David, Dave, Firehouse, uh, Ian. Right. Feeling a bit slow today. We'll see how we go. Still a bit early. Got woken up at five o'clock in the morning, so I didn't get as much sleep as I wanted. I've got another camera. I picked up, well, not this one, but one of my other cameras. I picked up another uh, Logitech C922. Um, I think it was basically new. It said almost no use, I think. Um, and we might need to modify it. Let me just turn some lights on to get a C properly. And I'll show you what I mean. So we've got the desk view here, which is my original desk view. You can see that one's fairly sharp. Um, that one looks alright. Then I've changed to my new desk view, which is the new camera. I don't know, does that look a bit blurry to you? I don't know, I think it's just slightly... I don't know, I think it's just slightly blurred. I think it's fully focused. So I might have to do the same modification I did with the other cameras, which is to get in there and just um, give the lenses a bit of a tweak. Because I don't think we're actually set properly from the factory, because it seems that every single one of these cameras has got this problem. But uh, yeah, that's not a thing about it anyway. We might play with that. I did a video on that anyway a while ago, showing you how to do it. So it's not like I really need to show it, but uh, I, it might be annoying. I haven't seen this in a long time. Well, it, you know, if you look at it from this view, it's you know it's it's looking pretty good there, isn't it? It's pretty tidy there. <laughs> uh, is that cropped down? I'm trying to think if that's cropped or not. Hold on, let me just check that. This doesn't look quite, it's quite the right view. Um, no, it should all be there. I'm just checking all the transformations and stuff to make sure I've actually got it cropping. No, it's full view. Okay. That's fine. The yeah, that's I don't know. From that view, it doesn't look quite so good. <laughs> Got to tie those wires up in the background there. Anyway, oh, that one. Yeah, that glare is interesting because that's actually from my light, which is on the side, which is behind my normal recording camera. I actually moved my other two lights out because I've got three lights by the desk, right? So I've got three which are know, sort of they were like far apart, which is was there was as far apart as I could get them because of that's the length of the wire that I've got because like a splitter cable where I had for it, and they're basically at the extent of that cable couldn't go any wider. So yesterday I actually moved them further apart, and because um, I bought some extensions, so I put some extensions on, moved them further apart, and um, so now they're basically as far away side to side as I can get, got one in the middle and one each side as far as I can get them which is basically on each end of the shelf they're attached to so that might give some better lighting maybe, I don't know but the top of the is going to be a problem with, I think with glare I think that is going to be a problem Hey Fred, how's it going? So yeah, that's um, going to be interesting I think yeah yeah, that camera's not wonderful, but I mean, these are nice cameras, but the focusing issue is a, a pain. And I actually checked the firmware and information like that on the camera, and it's the same as the other two cameras I've got. So all three cameras are identical. So it's like it's not that I ever need a firmware update to fix the problem. This is you. So, yeah, not helpful in any way. Um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to work on today. We've got a few things we could tinker around with. I hadn't planned that too much. I'm quite flexible today about what we're going to do. Um, I recorded a mailbag video yesterday, which I've already put up for Patreons. I've been recording loads of these little um, beginners videos, which you guys would have seen. Um, 
Oh, well, I've done eight in, a, in this week, so that's, to me that's loads. Um, I want to try and you get ahead by a couple of weeks. So I've got a couple of weeks worth sitting there waiting to go, as it were. But I'm not going to do that today. Um, but I've had some comments on the resistor one, but I went a bit too quick through it. I skipped a lot of things that maybe I should have covered. So I might actually do a revisited one. So I might actually go into a bit more depth about some of the things. I was trying to sort of just give an overview, say, hey, resistors drop current and that's all you really need to know but <laughs> you had to try and pad that into a video as well but um, I probably didn't cover enough detail about what a resistor actually is how it's constructed maybe I should go back and do a revisit of that one and actually add that in um, I mentioned about the wire round that's about it but I didn't actually cover the films so I might do something there use light burn really Supposed to be using loads of cut software, but the greatest PC games. Hmm. Give us a poll. Give you a poll about what? Um. Yeah, I don't know. Um. So I'll, I'll tell you what my current list of um, planned videos are. Uh, I might have show you this, but you probably can't see it on screen. It's probably too small. We'll try it. Let me know if you can see it or not. Can you read that? Probably not. This is my list here. So, I don't know. I don't know. This stuff. I think I can make this bigger, can I? I don't think I can. Anyway, so, um, that's the list. I doubt you can read it. Readable only 23 inch. Well, I'm streaming in t uh, 1080p now. Remember that last stream I did, but I actually did change to 1080p and it seemed reliable. And I've left it at 1080p and it's still going fine, so the resolution should be pretty good. Whether or not you can see this on your devices. Anyway, I might read it out to you. Um, Let's go. Uh, so we got integrated circuits, which I'm just going to do like an overview of like what they kind of are. And basics. I'm not going to go at all. I don't think. I, I don't know. It's a tricky one. That one. It's not. There's so many different versions, as we all know. I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle that one yet. I'm still thinking about that one. That's supposed to be the next video I do. Um, Open collector output, which is based off the integrated circuit stuff, you know, syncing and sourcing. Linear voltage regulators, because everyone needs to know about those. Linear power supply is obviously a progression from the regulators. Um, AC versus DC, which is basically, I'm not quite sure I'll do that one yet. It kind of smooth, goes into the next one, which I'm planning on doing as well. So AC versus DC is basically going to be something like AC to DC conversion. Um, that aspect of it, right? Just... I think that should be alright for a video in itself. The next one's going to be noise filtering and AC to DC smoothing, so continuation of AC to DC. Um, they're almost the same video, I think. I might end up merging those in, I'm not sure. Um, operational amplifiers. Um, that is just going to be a really basic overview. I'm not going to be going too much detail on those. Dave has already done a really good video on op amps, so, you know. Um, I just know I could compare to that. <laughs> but again, I'm just going to be giving an introduction to say, look, this is what they do. Um, in some, you know, give a couple of examples, maybe, I don't know. But I may even have to do some example projects, like actually build something up, I don't know. Um, but I'm just sitting there talking about it. You know, we're getting to the point now where we have to start explaining things a bit better. Uh, Ohm's Law, Power Triangle, I'm going to cover that one. Bit of theory, which gets you the maths. Most of the maths, most of the beginners you ever need. Um, relays and re switches, just explain a little bit about them. Uh, Otto couplers, then we're getting towards power supply stuff. Um, switch mode power supplies, a little bit of that. I'm not great on switch mode power supplies, I know how they work, but I'm not great on fixing them. So, um, I have fixed them, but I'm not great at it. So, um, that's going to be a very much a helicopter view on switch modes, I think. Um, crystals and oscillators, explaining about those. LCDs and other displays. 
microcontrollers, there's a bit of delving into that. Um, voltage references, I thought I'll, ch I'll th chat that in there again, it could be relevant, maybe. Um, I'm not sure about that one yet. And one on static electricity, but just to you know, make people aware of the fact that it exists and they have to be cautious of it and keep it in mind. That's as far as I've got so far. So that's um, my current list, but that could easily change. I might add things or delete things from that list yet. These are things I haven't recorded yet. And part of the problem I had, like um, when I recorded the LED video, there's some things in there which I wanted to cover. And when I actually did the video, I forgot to include them. <laughs> like I was going to mention about the reverse breakdown voltage, so you can't go too high voltage in LED, I was using the blind LED up, that kind of thing. Um, I've completely forgot to put that in the video, so hmm. there's things I may try and slip in later on in different videos, but maybe I might build a project, actually do some project builds using the basis of this information and say, look, you know, these are the parts we talked about, this is how you can use them, and do some kind of basic little circuit or something, and then try and mention those things which I've missed previously or didn't maybe elaborate on enough. So, I don't know. So yes, that's the uh, the list. But I want to do basically a video every day for as long as I can. Reason being, I noticed that uh, I'm side guy who does some really good videos as well. If you haven't seen him, go and look him up. Um, he's basically been doing a video every day, and his growth has been phenomenal. Um, he's grown extremely quickly. And I think it's because he's doing that daily video thing, right? And he's doing a bit of teaching and doing a daily video. So I'm basically, in a way, copying him in the way he's doing it. And like, you know, he's doing a video every day and he's trying to do something educational and interesting each time. Rather than just like what I do in my videos, obviously, is mailbags, as you all know, and um, you know, interesting things to talk, you know, play around with, and repairs and little projects and stuff I may tinker with sometimes. Um, so obviously the repair is more a thing of, hey, if you've got one of these bits of gear and this goes wrong, you know, this is how you fix it, which only benefits a small number of people, really. So I thought I might just try and hit a bigger audience on a daily basis and see if that would give me a jump in growth. I don't know. It may or may not work. Um, who else has turned up? Uh, we haven't read the chat for a little while. Um, did you get it on 1080? Excellent. Yeah, repair tips will be something I'll get to. I'm going to work through this series first. So I've actually got two folders set up. I've got one folder for which is the Electronics Beginners series. And I've got another folder which is going to be Electronics Repair for Beginners. All right. So that's the other one I'm going to do, um, which will go into more detail and you know, that sort of stuff. So I need to split that up because one's purely for beginners, slightly experienced people kind of thing. That's what I'm looking at anyway. Um, and the other one's obviously slightly more advanced, so that's why I'll split this off into a separate series. So I'll be doing that one after this one. Basically, I've got three months where I don't have to work a weekend, so I'm going to be trying to use that time to build up a video collection and try and get as many daily videos out as I can. Um, there's a new message someone threw in your face before you chat. Oh, yeah, the YouTube policies thing, yeah, I, I, I don't know what I decided about that. Hey Andre. Um, new Axiom New Tweezer. Axiom New Tweezer, I don't know what that is. I built a station for that. Hmm. You just tinker with op-amp filter circuits and measuring bow plots. Oh, okay. So that's using like capacitor feedback and stuff, is it? Um, <laughs> can't do anything right older. Hey, Dash. We'll be officially warned. <laughs> um, I'm going to do any repair videos. Yeah, I'll do something repair based. Um, I haven't. I, I, when I was discussing this whole making a repair video it's a tutorial thing some time ago, was, I don't know, a few months ago now I talked about it, I did actually put together a list of things I wanted to cover um, 
my folder for that video series currently is empty, nothing in it, because I haven't actually started constructing it. I'm going to get through this one first. Um, where do I put it? So, yeah, I've kind of put together like a diagnostic ch cheat sheet, which I'll chuck up in the top view, and you can see that on. Let's try and get it up here, so you can see it. Again, this is small text. Um, top window. There we go. Right, so this time I've been writing, um, and this time I'll probably break down to videos and I don't know, I'll do something with this, but I'll probably read through this and decide what videos I'm going to do based on this cheat sheet which I was writing before about how to troubleshoot certain things and as like individual things, check this, check this, these are things to watch out for. Um, yeah, so this is something I was kind of working on for a while. So I might include that um, in some form. I'll probably do a video series based on this and then include that as part of the series, you know. So, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of things I want to do. And I've got three months of weekends to get it done. eBay stuff, yeah. Etin, you toys. Ah, oh, okay. Etin. Right. Um, I'm so not familiar with them. I haven't seen them. I probably should try and update myself a bit on what's around. I've actually been talking with Banggood about some stuff. I've been trying to get a um, handheld oscilloscope. And... Um, you know, obviously to do a review on, it would be handy for me, I slightly the you know. And I haven't been able to secure it yet, I've been trying to. They're, they're trying to push me onto other products. One of the ones I tried to give me was a welder, believe it or not. Um, and I was actually really tempted. <laughs> it's a multifunction welder, it can actually do plasma cutting as well. Okay, apparently this takes an air supply, just pneumatic compressed air, it's like... TIG welding with compressed air, I don't think that quite it's alright. It needs gas. Is it argon or something I think it uses? Um, so yeah, it's like mm, yeah, I'm interested but I'm not set up for doing welding videos and even welding in general, I'm not really set up for it that well. Um, I've done arc welding and I've done some videos on arc welding. I'm me fixing things doing arc welding I should say, not necessarily doing it well, but making things stick together with a Arc world. <laughs> um, and what's the last thing they try to give me? Um, I said no, no, it's not really my thing. You know, it's like not really appropriate for what I'm trying to do. It has to be, you know, electronics related, basically, or something that like people would want for their labs or whatever. What kind of the last thing was they sent me now? Well, the last thing they offered me, I should say. Um, Oh yes, it's a network tester for doing testing networks, you know, Ethernet networks. So you can check like PoE voltages and which pins are used, and also does like a a, um, a cable length check as well. Time domain reflectometry was it? Was that? It? Um, so yeah, uh, that was tempting because well, that could be handy for me doing you know PoE checking and things like that, make sure things are working. Well, well that could be handy. But I'm thinking, well, does it really line up? I haven't said yes or no on that one yet. I'm thinking about it. And as for buying stuff on eBay, I've got a couple of things coming. Um, they need fixing. I intentionally buy broken things. If I actually have a choice between a working unit and a broken unit, even if it's at the same price, I'll buy the broken one. <laughs> because I need to make content. That's why I buy these things. So, um, yeah, it's getting hard. I mean, the postage price, I bought something yesterday, postage was as much, in fact, the postage was more than the thing I purchased. Um, 
Yeah, that's and it was expensive. It was uh, what the hell would I pay? I think I paid nearly a thousand dollars for this thing I'm getting. It's about eight nine hundred or something. It was a lot. But I've got two more things coming which haven't arrived yet at the moment. The thing I just purchased and the thing I purchased about two weeks ago hasn't arrived. Should be here soon. But uh, I always need to keep repair projects on the go, so I'm always trying to find things which would be interesting, a bit unusual. So yeah, that's the plan anyway, to keep buying things where I can, but it's definitely getting harder and harder. When I first started doing these videos, and buying stuff off eBay, it was relatively easy. You know, you could go and you could buy something quite cheaply. You could spend a couple of hundred dollars, to, you know, two or three hundred dollars, and get something to fix without much trouble. And now it's sort of twice that amount, um, maybe three times that amount, to get something of an equivalent kind of complexity. You know, equivalent kind of devices because the postage has gone through the roof, and even what people want for the equipment is, is also increased in that time as well. Uh, a broken thing for a thousand dollars. I'm not sure. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know, there's lots of things I, I sort of don't go for because it's just ridiculous money. A lot of the stuff I end up buying and fixing, um, I do try and sell some of it, but the market in New Zealand is extremely small, so I don't try and sell it on eBay again or ship it overseas and all that. I'll keep it local. But the market here is very small for trying to sell stuff. So I actually have, in fact, it reminds me, I think my auctions have expired. Um, yeah, I've actually got about, I think it's about nine or ten things on Trade Me, which I think have expired. I should go and check that. Um, things I'm trying to sell, like the Datron Multimeters, the 1062s, I've been trying to sell them. Three of those I'm trying to sell. Uh, the Rack Old Dana 1992. Um, and some other bits and pieces. I'll, so some things, if I think it's going to be useful to me, I'll keep hold of it. Or if I need maybe a couple of them, so I've got a spare, I'll keep hold of one. But I'm trying to sell some of this stuff, because that helps to finance the other things I could buy. You know, If I can sell these things again, then I can use that money to buy something else to fix. You know, That's what I'm trying to do. Don't make any money from this. Um, actually, I'm just going to go and check and check my listings because I think they have expired. I haven't had a notification, so I think they're probably finished over a week ago. Better check that. Yeah, all my listings expired. Better relist these. Hold on a second. Won't take me long. So what do you have? Tetra 1062 has got three of those. I've got my Fluke 5200A. I'm on the shelf about that one. I'm actually tempted to keep it. Because it's got some features that my other calibrators can't do. Um, I've got an HP A648 um, IF signal generator module. It's one of the modules out of the units. So I did a repair to one a couple of years back. And this is the SIGGEN synth board. And um, I actually repaired the board. But in that time, because I didn't know what it was, and I didn't have a circuit diagram for it at the time, and it's a bit up in the air, but whether I was going to fix that module or not, I actually purchased another module. And I've never used it. I never even got to try it. So apparently it's a working module when I purchased it. So I'm trying to sell that. Um, Record Day 1992, as I said. Um, and some other bits and pieces which aren't really electronics related. So yeah, um... Yeah, but I've, it's a small market. It's really hard to sell stuff. It took me over a year to sell the HP power supplies I repaired. I eventually sold them all, but um, it took a long time before they went. I didn't get the money I wanted for them either. Even the Datron 1062s, which I've got on there, I've got three of them on there, three different conditions. One of the ones is when I did the repair to the display, you know, I made that display replacement module. Um, Replacement display module. Um, one of those is that unit, and um, now so all those units I've got on there, but they're not they're priced well below where I think they're actually worth, and they're still not selling. So it's a bit disappointing in a way. You know, I'm trying to get some money back to find channel, and I'm not getting the money I need.
ready for them. All right. Um, catch up with Jet. Last is all for parts here. Don't buy parts on eBay unless you absolutely have to because you never know what you're going to get. Um, yeah, still some Detrons. Well, I've got three Detrons sitting here. I'm trying to sell them. Seems nobody wants them. Started selling repair stuff, yeah. Gave away the power supplies, nice. What are you two channels to give them away to, Ian? Because I haven't noticed anyone mentioning them, so I guess I'm not following the same channels. So I'd be interested to know what channels they are. You can actually post the links to them because you're a mod, so you can um, link to them. Just post the links to the channels. If I'd like to take a look too, sounds like maybe I'll be interested in them. Maybe you will see us also interested in them. You still haven't got a PDV, it's too many. Oh, Thomas, that's he's letting the side down there. You need to buy one. Isn't that right, Ian? <laughs> Ian's slightly biased, obviously. <laughs> uh, see many Cadillacs dumping the older gear. Yeah, I've seen a few things pop up. But some things I've been seeing have been a bit expensive. Like there was, um, there was a couple of fluke things I saw pop up. Which I was really tempted by, but the price was a bit high. Um, for what they are, it's like, well, you know, well, obviously, what they were originally was a lot more than that, but for me, is it worth it? Not really. Is there anything I'm going to be fixing? Probably not. So, it'd be something to have as a tool, you know, but that's about it. I can't think of what they were now. There's a couple of things I saw, and I was really tempted by them, but um, I didn't go there in the end, I decided against it. Once we get a can of the tracking dies, that's useful. Getting up, getting harder to test, getting parts. Depends on the gear. Um, there are some sites which specialise in old parts. They store old stock or they have equivalent parts, maybe, which maybe get relabeled. I'm not sure. Um, there's a site I do use from time to time, and I never had any problems with it, but other people have reported problems, but I personally haven't had a problem. Um, Gadget UK, okay. Okay, I haven't watched his videos for a little while, actually. But yeah, Gadget UK, I, I'm subscribed to him, but I haven't actually watched his videos a little bit. Yeah, he's, he's deserving, definitely. Um, and... What was I saying? Oh yes, that's site. So I've purchased some hard to find parts. Like the only place I'll be able to find them is this one website, and I've used them and they've worked. So yeah, but I think you still have to be cautious. I think you have to sort of be in mind that this site is a supplier for lots of other people, so as well. So they've got their own stock and also source from other sites as well. So if you maybe don't pay attention to that aspect. Maybe you're getting them from a third party source and then you may have a bad time. I'm not going to say who it is. Reason being that they try to, they offered to do a sponsorship once, right? And the, even though it could be beneficial for everyone, I should say, oh, you know, I would name them otherwise, but because of what they did to try and get a sponsorship, I'm not going to name them. I'm not going to give them publicity. So they often approached me for sponsorship, and I said, "Yeah, I'd be keen to do that because I use this site. You know, I actually do buy things from you, and it would be useful to me." So I put together a list of things I wanted because things are actually working on a project at the time, and I had those things in stock. So I put together a list of all the bits I wanted, which I may or may not need. Um, and I put through the order, and I said, "Yep, here we go. Here's the order. Here's the order number." Um, you know, let's get on with it. And I said, oh, um, well, it's a bit much, really. We, we, we don't, you know, we was hoping you could buy some stuff locally and, and say it's from us. It's like, what? <laughs> I didn't actually want to supply me anything. I just want to put the name on something. It's like, no. 
Um, so that was interesting. That's an interesting marketing ploy. Buy something from a local supplier yourself and say it came from us as a, as a sponsorship. That's not a bloody sponsorship. Anyway. So because of that, I'm not going to give them any publicity. Ever. So if you ever see me get some parts um, from somewhere and I don't say where they came from, it probably came from them. All right. So, but I'm never going to publicise them because of that slightly weird practice they had there. It's like that's not the way to go about it. Anyway, sounds like my cat wants to give me a catio. Yeah, well, well, I've got a few cats around. <laughs> I'm not sure which one it is. But a video, fake versus real. Um, I'm not sure I've got any fake parts around. Oh, actually, I might have. I don't have many examples, though. I've got some parts which I think are fake. I don't know for sure to actually get to use them. They... Yeah, I'm just trying to think now. Why did it block that one? It said, boyfriend, you're an old fart, and it blocked that one. Why did it block that? <laughs> I don't know. Weird. Anyway. So, yes, I, I do have... I've definitely got one which I think is fake. Because of the fact that it's a part which is no longer made, and they were off eBay. So, draw from that your own conclusions. <laughs> brand new and they don't look right so I put them to one side and I accidentally at the time I I wasn't paying attention properly and I grabbed these parts and they arrived and I put them in with my normal stock so I, I chucked them all in because I had a bunch of these original ones which are real um, and I chucked them in there and I thought oh crap I've mixed them up so I don't you know which one's which now kind of I think I've got I can probably kind of identify them but uh, yeah <laughs> Spam bots. I haven't seen any spam bots for a while. Not me anyway, I haven't seen any. Well, I've got quite harsh filtering on my channel, so I've got like, YouTube gives you a block list. You can add phrases and words and stuff to the block list, so all many blocks, comments, and I think and chats as well, that have those phrases and words in them. And my block list is quite extensive. So each time I see a new bot pop up, I'll grab unique wording from that message drop in a block list and that's it they're gone forever um, yeah cat calls static discharge <laughs> oh, maybe we could include the cat in the uh, static electricity video how to build up static electricity strike a cat <laughs> um, you have a question about programmers for laptop motherboard bias is a EAZP2023 better than a CH341A? I don't know what the EZP2023 is. I haven't seen that one. I've got a CH341A. Um, never used it. <clears throat> Reason being that I use a Mac. So for me, a lot of these softwares are PC only. right? So in those situations, I have to mess around. I've got to get the laptop out. You know, especially to play with it, and so I, I've I've got the software, I've got it stored, so when the time comes, I can load it up and use it. Haven't done that yet because I've no need to. And for me, it's like these programmers, they're just handy tools to have. So <clears throat> I've got I don't know maybe half a dozen programmers. I know people, some people out there have a lot more than that, um, but half of these I've never used because I've got them thinking. That could be handy. I've seen somebody else using it, for example, in a video. I thought, that could be good. Um, I can see a use for that. And I'll grab it whilst I could get one. You know, So I'll get it thinking, great, it's available. I'm going to get it now. Because maybe in two years' time, I'll find that I need that programmer for doing a certain job. Um, they're not available anymore. So I'll get them when I can. Which means I have a lot of clutter because I buy things which I may never use. 
but I've got them. Um, <clears throat> uh, SpaceX launched another space dong. <laughs> what you found at my multitasking, you're right. Secretly really run the blow up, yeah, well. Unmanned the blow up, yes, obviously unmanned. <clears throat> Um, bought some ceramic brand new resistances from time. RTME. And, and they tied very soon. No, oh, that's fake, eh? Died. All right. Died very soon. Okay. Well, I'm streaming at 1080p as I said, and I haven't dropped a single frame yet. This is looking really good. I'm really happy about this. Obviously, my network provider has been doing upgrades, and I've been doing upgrades. I've been doing continuous upgrades, upgrading all the time. It's really good. They're always trying to improve their network. And um, I've obviously got to a point now where I can now stream in 1080p. I couldn't do this before. So I'm really pleased by that. I think I was probably one of the things which helped push me along a little bit because I complained a lot about the fact that it's getting dropouts and losses and stuff like that. But they've been a really good provider. They've actually been really supportive. So each time I've had a problem, they've actually tried to solve it. And, you know, like even replacing my equipment and stuff like that, you know, for free. Hey, have a new modem. Here, have a new antenna. Um, you know, you know, installer turns up, replace the antenna. Um to try and solve the problems but I've been happy with the reliability and so they're generally a good company so I'm actually really happy with them um, so although they've had their congestion issues they've been working to solve them and that's really good that shows you know good thought you know they actually realized hey they've got a problem they've been working on it and they've progressed to the point now where even I'm happy with it and that's saying a lot although my stepson's not so happy about it he's <laughs> I think the network is working absolutely fine. I don't have a problem with it. And because he's a gamer, um, he's never happy with it. If I upload a video, his game basically stops. <laughs> um, I've got priority in the network, so I, that's like, I go full pelt straight through the network. My, net, my video goes up. And um, yeah, he doesn't like that so much. He, he gets really annoyed with me sometimes, doesn't he? You uploading a video? Yes, it's my internet. I pay for it. It's mine. I upload a video, I can if I want to. <laughs> anyway. Digging up straight fibers at home, that's nice. 26 meg to 900 meg, that's awesome. Well, my upgrades I've been doing, well, the upgrades I've been doing on the network are for me, and you know, this region, I should say, which obviously affect me. Um, I used to be getting about, um, on a good day, I'd get about probably 5 up and about 15 down on a good day. Um, and as I've been gradually improving the network, now I'm basically on a bad day, that's what I get. On a good day, I'll be getting probably 35 down, 10 up. So the up is limited to 10, I think. So, um, but when I've I've noticed when I've made a complaint about some problems with network problems, they put me on a monitoring system. When I put the monitoring, my speeds go up. I've noticed that. Um, so, like my upload speed, going instead of being limited to ten, I get unlimited upload speed. It just gets, I could do like twenty, twenty-five upload, which is brilliant. I should just keep complaining until they keep me on monitoring. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the speeds don't compare. You know, not to fiber. I mean, it's just wireless networking you know wireless internet so there are you know practical limitations to it um, but the speeds although they're not these massive numbers they're fairly consistent now they didn't used to be but now they're much better so there was a period there I was getting dropouts every day or several times a day I would get an internet which just wouldn't work I have to reload stuff because it just dropping packets all the time and now it's really good so I'm really happy with it 
so yeah, I mean, I'm really, I mean, as long as I've got enough to do what I want to do, I'm happy. I'm not greedy about it. Um, I mean, sure, it'd be nice to have gigabit upload speeds, <laughs> um, gigabit download speeds even, but is it really necessary? No. You know, if I'm downloading something, oh, I might have to wait five minutes instead of having it down in 30 seconds. Eh, so what? Yeah, well, I used to, many years ago, um, there's a system, like a file sharing system called Hotline, and I ran a server, and it's more interesting, really. It's pretty pointless, because I was on dial-up, um, and it wasn't even 56k dial-up. <laughs> uh, it wasn't good. Anyway, but hey, I... It was interesting. It was an interesting experience running a server. Built some software to make it, make a, a bot which actually monitored the server and booted people off for taking abuse and nothing like that. And, yeah. Wrote software for it. That was interesting. But, um, yeah. Those are the days. But that was on my... No, I was, back then I was saying, oh, I wish I had one megabit. That'd be great. Well, now I'm on a lot more than one megabit. Yeah, fibre to the cabinet is quite a common one, isn't it? Fibre to the door is a bit different. But yeah, where I am, there's no fibre at all. It's just purely wireless. I was basically, I think I may have been the first person in this town to get wireless ball band. Because people are going, what's that antenna? And, you know, I'd tell them about it, and then suddenly they've got one, and then somebody else has got one. And now, basically, everyone here that is in this area um, has got one. Because that's all there is. If you want a decent connection, that's, you've got one choice. And, um, yeah. So I think I was actually... No one else had antenna when I had one. So I think I was the first one to get one. So I was like the... The first person in this area to do testing and, you know, feedback about how the network was performing. So I think that maybe that's helps a bit with them, I suppose. I've been with them for a long time now. You think how his dial-up sounds? Yeah. <laughs> I think I actually still got one of those dial-up modems around somewhere. I think I've got one somewhere. I'll then I'll chuck it out. I don't know, actually. I might have chucked it out now. I'm trying to think where it is. If I can't think where it is, I probably got rid of it. Hmm. Anyway. But I know some people as well have had issues like with fibre going to their places and the fibre's, you know, speed should be good. But because the network overall is over congested, over subscribed or even, um, and congestive, then their speeds can be rubbish or they can have lots of packet loss and all that. So, I mean, I mean just because you've got fibre doesn't mean the rest of the network is up to standard. You know? Yeah, 28.8k, yeah, that's the one. Phone with dial, yes, I remember that. You know. Yes, the old phones. Anyway. So, I've been talking with Big Clive. Just name dropping. Um, the YouTube got a feature where, um, they've added a feature recently, where you can do a redirect from the end of a live stream, so you go to somebody else's live stream, or premiere. And I've been talking to Clive about trying to get it set up so that one of us can redirect to the other one because we both stream at the same time. And so whichever one of us will finish first, the redirect will kick in and send people to the other person's stream. So there's a chance that later on when Clive has finished streaming, if he managed to get it set up, I don't know, he hasn't told me if he got it done or not. Um, there's a chance that when Clive finishes streaming that people from his stream will jump on to our stream and... I don't know. Be surprised. I don't know. <laughs> There's possibly. Or oh, and vice versa, but then most of you guys know about Big Clive anyway and you know pop back and forth between the two anyway. So um yeah, let's just thought I'll give you a heads up about that. It's something we're looking at playing around with right now. Um could, uh, because we both stream at the same time it made a, a obvious choice to try and do that. So I don't know if his been able to actually get that configured or not. I, I've been trying to set mine up to point to him, but for some reason I can't actually get it to allow me to slip point this channel. You just won't let me do it. It says no one's available. It's like, well, great. 
you know, I know he's got a stream planned and scheduled. You have to have a scheduled stream to be able to do it. Um, and I've been trying to link to his stream, but YouTube won't let me for some reason. So I don't know if it's not working properly or whether there's something else going on there or some configuration problem that we still got to figure out. But I don't know if he's been able to link to me. I don't know. He hasn't told me. So um, I'm just going to ask him. I'm just going to drop and do his live stream and ask him. That's an idea, isn't it? Give me a second. Bear with me. This would be a good way to solve it, wouldn't it? See if I can watch a live stream at the same time as streaming. Right, obviously you better hear Clive now, maybe. It's got 791 people. Now, Christians, did he see my comment? Sometimes he hasn't seen them. I'll have to post it a couple of times. Just give me a minute. He's talking about vaping right now. Just give me a chance to see my comments. No. When, when he starts talking about vaping, I notice he tends to get quite distracted. I'll post it again. Get him on, Clive. No, just a comment. I want to know if you managed to get it done or not. So, um, I was thinking about that. My next door neighbor was a door entry system phone went down. So, the guy that phoned that, I contacted the company, and they came out and they sat around for a while with their handset responses, and then went away again. No, it's too busy waffling. Well, chatting, I should say, not waffling. Um,. Yeah, please write something on the channel. <laughs> Go to his live stream and point out that I'm trying to get him. Something like that. Because he doesn't see all the comment, obviously, because there's so many. Hey, friends on there too. It's quite an interesting system. There are on the So it's not really in the chat very much, unfortunately. Chat's whizzing past. Let's go. It's nice to spell Abel wrong. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Super chat, yeah, that could work. There we go. Cool, we saw it. Okay, cool. Right. It was very odd. He saw it in the end, that's good. Okay. Okay, close off. Back to me. Okay. <laughs> Back to this stream. Yeah. So I'm watching Death, I'm watching Clive. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, what, what the hell was that called? There was a movie. Uh, what the hell was that called? Inception. Inception. That was quite a good movie. I quite enjoyed that. It's weird. <laughs> if you haven't seen Inception, I'll recommend you go and see it. It's quite cool. Um, yeah, you're here to avoid big life, right? Anyway, 
Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> so it sounds like he had the same problem as me. He didn't have the same um, rights to share, even though we both should be able to share and redirect to each other. Um, we both get in the same era, it seems. So, yeah. Um, it's a shame. Okay, well, we'll try and get it sorted out in the future. That'd be quite good, I think. If we can get YouTubers to redirect to other YouTubers, you know, so it's, it's keeps the thing going. You know, whoever happens to be streaming at the time can redirect to somebody else. That'd be pretty cool. So we're just trying to get it to see if it work. And at the moment, looks like it's not. So, anyway. Um... <clears throat> so we should really play with something you know it's like I've been sitting here for nearly an hour now waffling which is even a long time for me waffling actually um, we should tinker around with something now the question is what do we tinker around with I have a couple of industrial power supplies we could look at they probably work don't know we could test them um, maybe put them apart have a look inside them Power supplies, is that interesting enough? I don't know. Um, I've also got the... I've got two heat kit devices here, which we could start playing around with. Both of them I want to do videos on, though. I'll do repair videos and well, refurbishing videos. One's the capacitor tester, which I did in the previous live stream, and I did the mailbag, I think it was, on that one, showing that. Um, haven't touched that thing yet, so it's been sitting here behind me in the pile. Also got my Heathkit IT12 signal tracer, which I've had for a while. I've had that for a dozen years. And I've never done any refurbishment on that thing. I haven't plugged it in for a couple of years either. So I'm not quite sure. Well, probably half a dozen years. I haven't, I haven't plugged it in. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. Um, they probably both need refurbishing, recapping, that sort of stuff. But I haven't looked at them yet. I thought, well, what I might do is do a couple of these videos on this Heathkit with devices because the um, they're both obviously valve based. I thought it'd be a little bit different because I, I don't normally do valve stuff. Right, the IT12 was the only valve based thing I owned until I got the capacitor tester. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I'm not experienced on these. You know, it's more of a um, all the gear, no idea situation. He does a lot more valve stuff. You know, he does a lot more. Um, I think he's I'm not quite sure. I think he said before he was trying to learn it himself. He's, I think he, he commented once in one of his videos about he's actually not really experienced with valve stuff, but he's doing it anyway because he's trying to learn it. So, hey Rob, how's it going? Oh yeah, Rob. Yep, that's, that'd be good. Let's sort something out. Um, so for those that don't know, Tautec, who's Rob, name is Rob, he is the New Zealand Siglant distributor. So he's the person that I've been getting the gear from to do reviews on various bits of Siglant test gear, apart from the stuff I already own, or end up buying, because I like it. That's happened a couple of times. Um, and so there's stuff which Rob was trying to organise for us to get together and we do some reviews on some time ago, actually. Um some new bits of gear which have come out and so unfortunately circumstances have meant we haven't had to do that yet um, so that would be quite good if um, we can actually get that sorted out and I say Rob I've got the next well three months basically every weekend is free I believe and this is anything I don't know about I think it might be actually it might be one weekend I've got to work but that's about it um, so Sometime you could be, you could put, if I can string a sentence together, you could drop down with some gear and we could do something, and and it's part of the live stream. You could certainly do that. Um, um, yeah, Patreon is a better system for me for donation side. If I was talking about that, I just sort of mentioned there. Um, Super Chat involves a donation to the channel, as highlighted. Yeah, that's right. Um, Super Chat's good for getting the YouTuber, which is streaming's attention, like at that moment. So, if you wanted to get, you know, if it's big, like in Clive's case, 
you have so many chats whizzing past you're lucky if he gets to see your one because sometimes it's really quick and he doesn't get to see with them all I mean I have trouble with mine sometimes just trying to keep up with it and I'm, my chat's pretty slow but you know relatively speaking compared to what Clive gets so the super chat's good for getting your your message highlighted so everyone and the YouTuber can see it Patreon is more of a support thing so um, you wouldn't get the same effect from that but um, Patreon side of it is that you give a donation which could be less than a super chat even and you get a month's worth of access to like whatever's on Patreon, you know, the free videos that are there, or the previews and stuff like that, so mostly what I do on Patreon myself is pre-releases, so people get to see them earlier, um, but also I do things like add-on service manuals and attach those to the files, so when I upload a video on there, if I'm doing a repair, I'll attach the user manual and a service manual if I've got electronic versions, so that's the benefit the Patreons get, is they get the manuals as well, not just the video, or like data sheets and what have you, whatever is appropriate that I've got sitting around that which are relevant to that video, I'll add them onto it so they're available as files to download to the Patreons. So that's what I do as a, as a perk, you know, pre-release and the files to go with it as much as possible. Um, so yeah, that's what I tend to do. But, um, but I think most Patreons are just happy to give me a little bit of money and just help to support the channel. I mean, um, yeah. Even like the YouTube members as well, same deal. YouTube memberships are probably not as effective for people. I mean, obviously I get money from it too. And YouTube take a greater percentage. And the YouTube perks probably don't really compare with the Patreon perks. You know what I mean? So YouTube does give you some perks. You get like you do get some highlighted chat messages and stuff like that. And a few other things that happen there. But it's not much. The perks on YouTube aren't great for the YouTube members. There's not really much there. Um... You get pre-releases, but I have to do it on a on a playlist. I've got a special playlist for the members, and I'll get to see that. Um, so that's basically it. That's, that's the only way I could actually do a proper perk for members is to actually have a special playlist that the members can see. Um, it's not the same as Patreon. Patreon's far better, really, for support. So, given the choice, if you are considering supporting me in some way, Patreon is where I think you should go. Because I think that's just better for you. You'll get more out of it. Plus, also do a thing on Patreon where you'll get sent some gifts, right? So after a period of time, depending on your donation amount, you'll receive something. It could be a sticker, it could be a cup. I think those are the things I've got available. Stickers and cups, I think it was. So it depends on how much you're donating and then how much it covers. So I actually, I think it's for three months, where your three months of donations is. If that covers the cost of the thing which is being sent to you then you'll get it, sort of thing. I think it's similar to that. Um, and that's automatic. You just get it. This is why I say as well, if you become a Patreon, make sure you put your address in it, because you'll then receive the gift. All right? And I'll obviously lose that money for that time, for that first you know, few months, I'll lose that money that you sent me, because it's gone on to the gift for you. So in a way, you've bought yourself a gift, I suppose. Um, but then after that, I, I'll get the donations again after that. But it's just my way of saying thanks, you know. Um, it's a small impact to me. Uh, I lose a bit of money for a few months from one person that's donating, in order to give a bit, give something back to sort of say, hey, thanks for donating. You know, um, you never say anything worth a super chat. Yeah, I, I don't tend to use it much myself either. Actually, I, I, I don't know. Is it because I'm a bit of a tight ass? I, I don't know. Am I tight ass? Am I tight ass? Probably not really. <laughs> Um, what's the book Calibration Philosophy and Practice oh good spotting Ian yes it's a fluke book it's about calibration and stuff and calibration practices and processes and how to set up equipment that sort of stuff and mathematics involved in it all sorts of stuff like that um, I haven't read it yet I only just arrived yesterday when I did the mailbag so I'll put it here for the time being and I need to sit down and read it but it's got a lot in it <laughs> it's not like stream links I'm not familiar with stream links I don't know what that is um, I've also got on my videos now there's um, super thanks I've been asking for that for ages from YouTube keep prompting and I've had that available for other channels for a long time like the, the selected ones that I do the trials on, you know. Um, 
So super thanks to my videos as well now. As it should be, you should be able to see it there. So if someone decides, hey, this is a really good video, you can give a th super thanks and you donate a, a one-off amount using super thanks in that video. That's only on YouTube though, that's a YouTube feature. And again, YouTube take a chunk of that. I think they take 30% of donations and memberships. I think it's 30% they take. So it's a fairly big chunk. Um, so you got Emacs to get ready for. Three day Emacs. Oh yeah. End of the month, is it? That came around fast. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking now. Yeah, that's that's. Wow, well, those bloody lockdowns are really throwing mess <laughs> that stuff, and I we just screw things up. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah. So what we're talking about, we're trying about talk about what we're going to play with today. We need to find something to actually tinker with and actually do something instead of sitting here chatting although some people like to chat I mean, I'm, I'm not a big talker normally like I'm normally very quiet I, this is the most I talk ever is when I'm doing a live stream I probably talk more in the past hour than I've talked in the past week give you some idea hmm I think a bird just hit the window <laughs> probably getting spiders Hey Joey, how's it going? Um, yeah. Uh, right, what was I going to say? I was, I was going to say something else as well. What was that? I don't know. Anyway, so we need to tinker with something. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not in the mood for making a video. That's the only problem. So I think we should tinker with something rather than make a video. What do you reckon? Should we pull a power supply apart? I've heard that sitting there for months. Months and months. Um, yeah, let's have a look at these. I'll just change cameras. Yeah, we go to the top view with the glare on it. Still have a light on. Does that go? That's not too bad. It's off the side. That one's pretty bad. And the middle one. Yeah, well... Yeah, I don't know. Might be right when I get some stuff on there. It's a shame about the desk reflecting back, eh? Um, let me try something. Is that better? Maybe. I use a cutting mat. Takes some of it away, doesn't it? It's not in quite the right place, is it? Slightly offset. Is that better? I suppose. It's kind of in shot. I don't know what those reflections look like. Joey, you give me a donation as well? Bloody hell. <laughs> How many cats in my reach right now? I don't know. A couple of thousand, probably. <laughs> Much better than the cat Yeah, still got a friction there, though. Yeah. Yeah, Philly Christian. Right, so we got that one, and we got that one, which is a bit high right now. I think this one might give you a better view if I can find somewhere dealing with the reflections. I might need to move these lights some more. Yeah, I'm not liking those reflections, that's the only problem.
Not quite sure I'm going to do with it. So these are some industrial power supplies. These are out of some old machines. So I think they were working when they were pulled out, but they're old, so there's a really good chance they're barely working. Because these things were never turned off. They were left on constantly. The machine was never powered down. Well, the hydraulic motors were shut off, but the machine was always powered. So these power supplies were always on. These are probably decent brands, actually. One's a mean well. The left-hand one's a mean well. The other one, I'm not sure. Probably an Omron or something like that. They often had Omron power supplies. Uh, what is it? No, it's another mean well as well. So, so it's 24 volt, 10 amp power supply. What's this one here? 24 volt, 6.5 amp power supply. The caps are coming out soon. Yeah, they could well be actually. Oh, I don't know. a whole bunch of terrible dad jokes coming up now. It's awful. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Right, the um. So we should pull this power supplies. I think that's probably just something to tinker around with. I mean. I've got a whole bunch of gear which I could do videos on or just even live streams about of things which have been salvaged from bits of old machines. I've got like a whole screen front panel, like the actual control panel with the screen, everything in it, computer. Basically it's the computer of the machine. I've got that. I've also got a rack mount computer system, um, which is a controller. LCI me to shoot out. Well, yeah, I could do that maybe one day. I'll do a video on that actually. I've got enough of them now. Um, so I've got all these things I could actually do videos about, and or just even just live streams about, and just tinkering around with things, and just having a look at them. I don't know. I know it's worth videos for, to do those, but I got them because they're throwing them away, and I said I'll take them. They could be handy. Famous last words, isn't it? Um, which is how I got these as well. You know. What do I need a 24 volt power supply for? Um, well, nothing really. I don't have a use for them. Not yet. Maybe one day, because I've got them, so maybe I'll find a use for them. You know, I'll create a use for them. I tore an old rear screen protector apart the other day and got lots of good parts. Yeah, sometimes it's worth salvaging parts. You, know, you can get all sorts of weird things which you wouldn't normally buy, and they could be handy. Oh dear. That's another bad joke, Friday else. <laughs> Peer videos are best if the problem's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem as well, though, isn't it? Trying to find something which is going to be interesting at the same time. Sometimes the repairs are pretty basic and straightforward. You know, like sometimes it's just replacing, cap replacing caps, I can't even say. Replacing capacitors. And, um, you know, those themselves usually aren't that interesting, unless maybe the faults are causing are interesting. I don't know. I mean, the amount of times I've replaced caps, and that's what fixes the thing. You know, it's like ninety percent of the time replace the caps, and that's why I say replace caps. Like if you see me commenting on other people's videos when they're fixing things, and it's old gear, you know, like eighties, nineties kind of gear or older, I'd say replace the caps. And I know some people say, oh, I don't just arbitrarily replace them. You know, measure them, and make sure they're actually doing replacing. Well. Yeah, you can kind of say that, but my experience is also that you can get capacitors which measure okay on a tester, but when you actually put them under load and test them, you know, actually put them in service, they don't handle it. You know, the, the voltage uh, is an issue. It's got a bit of leakage there, maybe, or, you know, it breaks down the voltage. So that's why I just replace them. Unless it's a, like a, I don't know, a liquid tantalum, wet tantalum. Um, those seem to last to right. The electrolytics obviously don't. Well, that's the problem is trying to find faulty gear to buy. Um, you 
you need two 10 amp 24 volt power supplies for trap shooting sick of using batteries yeah I'm, I've got some other power supplies laying around as well I've got some other 24 volt ones I don't know, well one of these is 6.5 amps, one is 10 amps. But they're old, they're not new, these have been, I don't know, these are at least 10 to 12 years old, I think, something like that. At least 12 years old, so they're not the best. They're not going to be strong. Um, see. Can't see any date codes on these. Maybe inside it will be something marked. Maybe there will be a date inside it. But yeah, these are old supplies. These are, say, salvaged from an old machine, which is thrown away because it's no good. <laughs> it was worn out, anyway. I've got some more power supplies. Give me a second, I'm just going to check. These were brand new ones. I'm not sure what I've done with them. This is a good one. This one here. 5 volt, 75 amps. <laughs> and I've used it. I thought it's just it for doing a calibration or something. So I could do a load test. What's that one? 5 volt, 40 amps. Yeah. Somewhere else, yeah. No. I've got some more somewhere else. I've got some more in the other room. But um I'm quite sure where they are. Yes, yeah, so I actually have a couple of power supplies I could give you Rob. Um if they work of course. Um, just reading chat. Uh, less than 20 years old and never used, so got a bunch of inductors and stuff. Cool. What are these events I do? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say. I work at events on the weekends. It's nothing technical. Well, actually, that's not true. It's very technical. Um, yeah, I'm not going to elaborate on that. <laughs> um. Hey, Joey, your package still hasn't arrived yet. That's... Concerning, it should have arrived by now. It's been, what, two months? That's a worry. I've had some other stuff go missing. Some of it turned up eventually, but other stuff hasn't turned up. Need to give away stuff to interested kids, not hold them. Well, a lot of these things, are, these power supplies I've shown before, in that drawer there, those are things which I purchased for me to use, so those are brand new, right? Um... Thing is, there doesn't really seem to be much of a electronics base here in New Zealand. It's like I don't know of a single place which does. Um, what's the what's the name we're looking for? There's a name for them, isn't it? There's yeah, there's places where everyone just turns up and get together and do electronics and stuff. Um, can't think of the name of it. Well, it's going to call Ken in the post. Yeah, definitely do that because it does seem to have disappeared. Um, Well, I, mean, I, would, I would give things away to one of these maker spaces. That's what we're looking for. Maker space. One of those sorts of things, you know. If there was one of those around here, I would actually donate stuff to it. But I don't know of one. Um, I mean, if there were one, I would give it away. You know, I've got stuff here which I don't need, and I would be willing to donate. Um, you know, if it, if, you know. A statue 1062s, for example, right? Um, which I'm trying to sell. 
I've, I've been lowering the price over time, just trying to t entice people to buy one of them. And now at the point now where I won't make any money on them. When I sell them, I'm making nothing. So, you know, it's purely for the case of getting the space back. So that's where they are now. That's the price they're at. So, which is disappointing. Um, because they're really nice meters. But there's things like that where I say, well, fine, I can have one of these. You know, I've got three of them. They're not selling anyway. Makerspace could have one. Have a really nice Datron multimeter. Sure, it's old, but fuck, it's good. <laughs> Yeah, you know, things like that, you know. Or, I've got all these old multimeters. I've got loads of multimeters here now. Um, I've got more coming. Um, in theory, I'm supposed to have two more coming for review. That I know about. That's supposed to be coming. Um, so, you know, I could probably look at, oh, okay, I suppose I could donate one of my old ones, you know, which I don't really need that much. Um, you know, that sort of stuff. I could do it. I wouldn't mind doing it, but... I need it to be a proper space where people would do that work, but I don't think there's anything here. Try back because death space. Yeah, true. That certainly is true, Andrew. Um. March 13th was it you sent it? Bloody hell, it's been two months, yeah. Got an ancient HP logic analyzer on my 50 desk. I actually tried to buy an HP logic analyzer um, probably about three or four years ago. Probably about four years ago. And it was a nice one. It looked really good. It looked like it was in good condition. Had all the probes and the pods and everything with it. It was fully kitted out. The price was right. It was good. Anyway, it disappeared in the post. Never turned up. That was annoying. <laughs> Never arrived. Vanished on the way here. Left an item today. Well, fluke two eight nine for a steel the other day. Did you really? I'm not familiar with two eight nine. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, I did see a message about um, you donating stuff to it. About the older guys there. Give them something to do and a bit of a motivation. It's good. Everybody needs something to do. You know, everyone has to have something to do. You know, keep your mind occupied. Bought a bunch of hundred meters last week. That's cool. That's good of you. The disk drives. Now, those disk drives. The reason I'm not using SSD is because those disk drives are in my NAS, and those disk drives are. Eight terabytes each. That's why you can hear them, and it's doing a backup, <laughs> and so it's syncing between all the drives. Um, pay three hundred just now. It's still cheaper than you, really. Um. I can move the mic probably a little bit closer to me, that might help slightly. And if I don't destroy anything on my desk in the process. Move it a bit closer to me and a bit further away from the NAS. That probably helps slightly. Um, yeah, so. Anyway, it's Fleet 289, you reckon? Let's have a look at that. I'm not familiar with that one. I should know this bloody stuff, but. Luke 289, let's have a look. Oh, okay. That's a nice meter. Actually, no, actually, no, I've now seen it. It rings a bell. Yes, this does look familiar. Yes, I was actually looking at one of these myself about six months ago. I should have remembered the number. I was looking at one of these. I was tempted by one. 
Not cheap, yes, exactly. 300 bucks is definitely a good price for one. Uh, normally, this one's 1100 bucks. <laughs> New. Discounted. Yes, very nice. So it's definitely got a good price on that one, definitely. That was a good one. Um, wow, some of these are. This is New Zealand price. $1,100 New Zealand, so. A little bit less than that. Yeah, that was definitely a good price then. Fluke is supposed to be sending me another meter, and um, Keysight is also sending me a meter. So I was talking with Daniel Bogdanoff on Twitter. Um, we chat from time to time a little bit, and um, I said, hey, any chance of sending me a meter to review? And he went, yeah, sure. Let's do it. So um, that should, that's supposed to be underway. It's supposed to be in progress. So I'm not going to say too much about that yet, but in case it falls through or whatever, these things happen. So we'll see. But um, it's looking promising. It's looking like I'll be getting a meter from Keysight and one more meter coming, or supposed to be coming from Fluke. But that was arranged a couple of months ago and that hasn't arrived either. So I might have to get hold of them and say, hey, did you send it yet? Um, they did say there was a bit of delay before they sent it. I, I don't know what the story was there. Um, but they said it's, they wouldn't be sending it straight away, it'd be a little bit later. So I might have to just remind them, maybe. Good thing it's 50 ohm range with 1 mega ohm resistance. 50 ohm range, really? Like a grand after tax, yeah. Um, it's didn't nice to drive so someone says something. <laughs> That's true. Well, it's actually in a lot of my videos. You hear the background. Anyway, let's pull something apart. Let's just um, let's pull something apart. Let's have a look. I'm sitting here waffling for ages and ages. Let's go and pull one of these apart. Let's have a look. See how the new camera view works. So, which one should we? Well, that's not good. There's something in that one. <laughs> what is that? It's a screw. Oh, that's alright. It's probably from when I took the mountings off. Yeah, it's probably from when I. It's probably on there before. Whenever I mount it, it's fallen in. Yeah, that's why you check things before you power them up. Um. Let's take the wires off. Oh, actually, let's get my electric screw either. It should be easier. Can I get in there? Oh, not really. Doesn't fit. Manual it is. Yeah, just uh, fork connectors. Your fork. Again, she always do it back up again because the way they're only loose if you lift them that way, and you end up losing screws. So, how do we get to this one? There's a little plug there and a screw there. So, I think if I am. That might be like a plastic rivet. Sometimes I have those to prevent tampering. As you'll see. Would it slide? Any direction? No. Let's lever this out. That's what screwdrivers are for, isn't it? Levering things. Come on. I know it slides. I'm pretty sure it's a plastic rivet. Well, 
which I can't collapse. So, levering it is. There you go. Classic rivet. Lots of dust and crap in here. This has been powered down for months, so there won't be any power left in this. Passes look alright. No bulging, no signs of leakage. So actually looks alright, apart from being really dirty. Yeah, that just probably needs to clean, put it back together. I might not even bother recapping it, I might just leave it as it is. This needs a really good clean, clean that apart. Let's pull the next one out. Uh, that's a mounting plate, which may or may not be in the way. That's folded over, does the screws of the fan. How is this attached? I think those screws there. And maybe these two here. There might be some more on the other side. Yes, I'll just see another one here, so this place will come off. See if this screwdriver can do the screws. It can. Hope you can hear me okay. I haven't got the microphone facing this way. Turn this way a little bit more. Might helps. Actually, I take it as wires off as well when I think about it. I you should be able to get to these ones. So move, I think we're in the right place. Look at that, it's got a little driver ball for the fan. Again, capacitor's looking good. Although this, these two feel slightly bulged maybe. Got the plastic cover on them, so it makes it a bit harder to deal with. But I don't know, is there a bulge under there? Uh, maybe not, it might be nothing. It's probably just the, the plastic bulging itself. But the caps look good, and just a little bit of dirt in there. It's better than the other one because it's just not open frame. Plug on there. So unplug that. There. Yeah. My sort of driver ball. Also good caps on it. HA17358 ICs on there. Maybe some kind of dedicated fan control was on it. Oh, that fan is knackered. <laughs> oh, is it just floating? Well, that's weird. Is that shaft broken? That just, that does, you know, it's, I'm pretty sure the fan isn't supposed to wobble like that. I think the fan shaft is broken. The actual plastic. Wow, okay. And that was running like that. That was a. F hmm. <laughs> this was in a machine which was operating before they shut it down and threw it away. Because um, it had control issues with the valves. So, yes. Um, that's not a good fan. <laughs> the other one's open frame, isn't it? And that's, that's got no fan on it. 
Didn't notice that. But this is the high power one, so obviously the fan's no good, this kind of new fan. Hmm. Okay. Well, just very dirty. But these Mean Mill power supplies, I know it's like a, I think Mean Mill is a Chinese brand. Um, meanwhile, actually have a reasonable good reputation. Actually make some nice gear. Nice gear. Nice gear. Nice equipment. Um, the Mean Mill stuff I've seen has always been good quality and long lasting. Um, so I th actually think they're a good brand. I think Mean Mill actually make stuff properly. I mean, this certainly looks on the same par as an Omron, you know. Omron power supply looks very similar to that in a way. Different layout, but very similar. Um, yeah, there's a lot crammed in there. Now I've got this dust up it. Oh, I can't say. Because I'm too busy burping. Right. <laughs> now I've got this dust all over my desk. Come back and check the chat. Right. Uh, oh, Joey. Oh, I've got super chats coming out now. See, that's the problem. I don't see them. It's looking at the screen. So we've got uh, one thousand thirty-eight videos. Yes, oh, that was ages ago. That was twelve minutes ago. I looked at that. Okay, yes, that's a lot of videos. Um, yep, saw that was before. Bit washed out on the right hand side, yeah, it is a little bit. That's because it's getting more glare from that side. If I turn that one off, does that help? That probably does help actually. By the way, Lord, actually, only fluke authorized dealer and a zero profit margin. Wow, okay. Passes some offsets. Well, I believe these power supplies work. Brightness minus 6 dB here. Um, too bright, yeah, okay. They're both main well power supplies. That one's a bright well. <laughs> uh, what, no burn components? Yeah, it seems that way. Just the fan is bad. I not sure I've got any fans that size actually. I'm not sure I've got a fan to replace it with. That cooler screwdriver I've had for a while, I've just been sitting in a drawer. I'll get it out from time to time. I did a review on it about a year or so ago. It's a cheap Chinese one, it's it is literally a cheap one. Um it works okay though, it came with accessories and you actually had a different um end piece you could change the end piece out to like a saw bit and all sorts of stuff so yeah cats can look at the bottom yes they can indeed oh, there's no signs of staining on a circuit board though that's what i was looking for as well i was looking for any kinds of liquid on the board like um dust build up around the bottom of caps where it looks like it's stuck to something um Need more Taiwan. Oh, Taiwan Taiwanese are they? Oh, okay. I thought they're, I thought they're Japan, uh, Chinese. Okay, I could well be wrong. Well, I think they actually work. You got a shelf full of Noctua fans. Nice. Those things aren't cheap either. Hey, Kiori. Um, yeah. I don't think I've got a fan that size. Well, this is a 10 amp one, which I was thinking of giving to Rob. And the fan's naked. Rob, you might have to replace the fan. If it's still there, Rob. Let's put it apart a bit further, shall we? And yes, the gloves this might be a good idea. Although, it's got some... Um, oh, no, it does have some there, maybe. That's screwed on there. Those are the attachments. 
I don't think there's any silicon grease in here because it's using these thermal pads instead. Let's move these bits of wire out of the way. Don't care about those are from. Hopefully, clear's a bit better now. Come on. Oh no, there is some silicon paste in there. Yep, okay. Yep, gloves on. Now I'm going to look at Rossman. <laughs> Screw another one down here. This one here. And one here. Get the screwdriver on it. Must be another one somewhere. But I don't see one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That must be it. Okay. Maybe it's just stuck in the sides. Let's try pulling them off. Which one is this guy? Does it lift or does it? slide. Oh, hold on. I missed one. I'm an idiot. That'll do it. There you go. And that moves. Kind of. Still stuck at the sides. Paste is actually fairly dry, it needs replacing anyway. It's interesting they use paste and thermal pad, and it's paste inside too, which is also fairly dry. Should just replace the whole lot. Bottom of the board's not looking too bad, actually. It's relatively clean. Gunk there. Like a blob of thermal paste, which has been laying around. Solar joints look fine. It looks right. No concerns about that one at all. Might as well place the thermal paste, put it back together. I suppose you want to measure the capacitors though, don't you? You want me to go through measuring caps, don't you? Oh, dude. Now I can't touch anything. Your parts in China as well, or maybe it's because I've seen a, Ch a Chinese made one then. It's possible. I 
to try and scroll up with my little finger because that's the only one that's not dirty. Your transformer question. Um, what's the best way to measure a transformer when data out of circuit to determine which side is attached to which and by how much in proportion to other windings? Well, the best way... Well, usually the primary windings are thinner than the secondary windings, all right? Usually. So the th thickness of the windings could tell you which whether it's primary or secondary. Usually, if it is, unless it's stepping up voltage, it might be the way around. Um, then just measure the multimeter to see which ones connect to which, because that will tell you the winding layout. And if you've got a centered enough multimeter, which you can measure really low ohms with, then you might be able to actually measure which ones are center tap and which ones are the end of windings and stuff like that. As far as proportions go, you can just chuck a voltage in one side, measure the voltage in the other. It doesn't have to be high voltage, you could do it in like I don't know, 20 volts AC and see what comes out the other side. Uh, SDS6204A, nice. Doing a review on that apparently, that'd be good. Haven't looked at it yet though, to be honest. I should do. Yeah, so the grease thing is just basically it's yuck. <laughs> I mean, it is supposed to contain some harmful stuff in there too. I don't know exactly what it was. And I said it's supposed to be cancer causing, but I don't know how much that really is an issue. Unless you're getting exposed to it continuously, I don't really see it being a problem. Um, I could be wrong though, so I'm a major caveat on that. But main thing is that it's dirty and it gets everywhere. Once you get it on your fingers, it just seems to go everywhere. It goes over your desk, over your clothes, up your arms, over your face ends up in your hair it just yeah <laughs> it just makes a mess so let's just clean these off and replace these because say it's just crumbling away it's all just crumbly so yeah it definitely needs an update should I go and get a clean off first um, yeah I might just pop outside for a second and brush this off, get the dust off it. And then I'll do it in here. I'll take these two outside. I'll probably do the same the other one before that one apart. I just want to clean it up, put it back together again and run it without the fan because the fan's obviously knackered. Um, but unless we're putting a big load in it, it shouldn't matter anyway. I'll just go and clean this up. We'll be back in a second. Bear with me. Right, I'm back. Looking somewhat 
cleaner. Just keep up my desk though. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably working industrial gear. It gets really messy. This stuff's all a bit. No, it might be right. It's fairly crumbly, but it's not too bad. I'll just put some fresh stuff on there. So I'll do that, and we'll put it back together, and we'll power it up, and actually test it. I'm pretty sure it works. I mean, it wasn't a working machine. It's just old. Um, can we put any date codes on this thing? Any date codes anywhere? There's some chips. 04, 0421, 0430. So that's 2004. Um, that one doesn't say. Not much to choose from here. What about on this board? It's got a date of 2003 on the board. Um, that one doesn't say either. Yeah. So, mid 2000s, let's call it that. So, it's not new. <laughs> you could say it's a factory original board, anyway. <sighs> we shall put some thermal compound on this. And put all these back together. Definitely not pleasant, buddy. Pleasant stuff to deal with, but that's what it is. Yeah. I'm probably putting on way too much, but I don't care. This one. I said I've lost one, but there is. these as well it is strange you've got pads and grease though usually it's one or the other but uh, hey I'm not gonna argue about it I guess they realized that the pads weren't working as well as they should and they needed to grease and they also need it insulated and putting the pads on is just easier Okay, and of course all the labelling is on this cover, which I forgot to take outside to clean. Oh well, not so much dust on this one. But yeah, that fan's definitely uh, <laughs> a 
effective. <laughs> you plug it in anyway in case it doesn't like not having it plugged in. So it ends with it actually. We, uh... So I might put the fan back on there and see what happens when it's powered. Could be interesting. We'll do that. See if it spins at all. So, I need to power this thing up. I need some wires. Take these gloves off because this is going to ask for trouble if I don't. Check, check. Um. I think I missed a lot. You mix it with glue to attach LEDs. Oh, okay. Yeah, the uh, 6000 series certainly is a lot of money. But you get a lot of scope for it. From what I understand. I haven't looked at it too much yet, but I glanced at it a little bit, looked at the basic specs. I think. Used toothpaste and Vaseline, that's inventive. <laughs> oh, how often did the trick? Interesting. Oh great, you can see that you can see better with that camera, can you? That's good. That's the intention, that's why I decided to do that one. Instead of this one, which you can't no, you can't see, but yeah, it's probably not as good. When I first started doing YouTube, I actually had an overhead cam, that's where my phone was, it used to be over the top of the desk. I haven't left yes, yeah, so I haven't put the um, attachments on, that's right. The actual um, clamps, I haven't put those in yet. That's a good point. I didn't put the clamps back on. I should put the clamps back on before power it. Otherwise, it won't heat sink properly, will it? Good spotting, people. I would have noticed eventually. <laughs> oh, come on. Is that going to sit? Sit in there. Am I going to get silicone on my fingers now? Now I've taken the gloves off. At least someone's paying attention. <laughs> it should be me that's paying attention. Come on, get in there. There's a fitted hole there somewhere. Here we go, let's have problem solved. Now I need a power cable. I likely have one here somewhere. This one's 
it's got connectors on here, then I'll take those off. Um, let me see what else I've got. It's a moving plug, that's a moving plug, moving plug, mm. IEC cable, the moving plug, no. No, I've got a choice of one. So this is what we're using. Wires off, that's all. Shame. Could have been handy keeping the connectors on. Mm, oh, never mind. You're gone now. I thought I'd fit in there. Oh, it will. Excellent. Make sure it's set to 240 volt as well. This one never set me on it. Hmm. Pretty sure it was 240 volt power supply. I should actually not assume that, should I? It's got 240 24 there. Oh, there we go. I was covering up my hand, so that's fine. It's um, universal. I think. Was there a switch in there? I didn't know it's a switch. Let me check, hold on. Need to be sure. I'm not seeing anything. I think the fine must be universal. The other one's got a switch on it. Right? Just set to the right voltage. But it could be that because it's running on an industrial machine, it could be running a different input voltage, it could be running off a different one, because it would have suited it better. But uh, anyway. Obviously we need to load this up to actually test if it's going to be okay or not. As I have a 300 watt electronic load, I can test it a little bit. I can't do uh, two. Oh, what's that? 24 volt 10 amp. That's 240 volts. Uh, 240 watts, isn't it? So yeah, I can actually test it. Can fully load it. Right. So we'll start off with doing power supply testing first. It actually powers up and outputs without a load on it. Sometimes they require a load. I might just, uh, I'll just hold the probes. I was going to attach them, but I thought I'd nice hold them. So, Stick a probe on here, stick a probe on here, and we'll power it up and see if it goes bang. You ready? Bear in mind the fan's knackered. 24 volts, there you go, it's actually working. It's drawing 10 watts sitting there idle, so that's pretty good, and obviously the fan doesn't work. But then it may be temperature control as well. Although I didn't see a thermistor, so maybe it won't. wouldn't be. Let's load this thing up and see what we can do. Need to sort some cables out so I can do that. Uh, no, 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 who's think? Yeah, well, hmm. Let's 
catching up the chat. Leave on for 24 to 48 hours, yeah. Right, let's sort some cables out for this, what I'm going to use. something which I modified previously, I put the connector on it because I was doing some other kind of testing, I think I was testing a power supply like a buck, not a block, I don't know what's it, um, a brick power supply or something, I don't know so I put a connector on it, I did a video on it I think so I might take that connector off and um, put the wires onto there and I'll put the clip leads onto the siglant load which I'll repair up, get a chance to boot up I think I'll do that Should I be lazy and just cut them off? No. <laughs> Hope I get these under the screws. They're pretty thick wires. I don't be putting connectors on them. My iron's turned down quite a bit too, so that's not helping. And it's a fairly small bit. Just goes under. Bear in mind, a fan isn't working, so I can't have it under power for a long time because the fan is obviously not going to be cooling it down. Right, so bear that in mind. I'll just be doing a short term test to see if I can do it at all. Um, if I get the overload, overload working on the machine over there for the load, it may or may not work. Test control software sometimes doesn't talk to this. And these Rocco clips are not great for the loading either, they're barely really up to the job. 10 amps is a bit much for these. Let's see if I can get an overload. Overload working on here. Oh, Joey's giving me some more money. Joey, stop giving me money. <laughs> Cappy? Oh, you calling me Cappy now? <laughs> I've got a couple of electronic loads. I've got the Siglet one, I've also got the Mayneo one. That's how you pronounce it. You give me enough money already, Joey. You don't need to give any more. Thank you very much. Um, okay, let me just see if I can get the overlay working. See if the software is going to talk to the load. No, I didn't find anything. It does that, unfortunately. Come on, wake up. See it. Uh, SDL. Yeah, I'm using Ethernet connection. Oh, there we go. Now it's found it. Okay, so now I should be able to pull up the um, 
displays. Give me a second, I've got to set this up. Um, I did have something set up for this, so let me. Um, was it this one? Yes, here we go. I've got an overlay. You should be able to see that on screen. I've got it right. You should be able to see it on screen. There you go. So you can see the electronic load there. Directly below the power supply connections. What am I set up for? 30 amp load. Let's do 36 volt range. Um, okay, I think that's all I need to set up. Let's power the power supply up. See the voltage there? Yeah, great. Um, so I'll set this at one amp for I'll start off with, right? We'll set at one amp. And then load that up. One amp, yep, that's working okay. Now, don't worry too much about the voltage, it will drop because of the cable I'm using. It's not a great, great connection through those crocodile clips. But it's doing one amp fine. Okay, let's do two amps. That's still looking alright, bit of voltage drop. Four amps. Yep, four amps is working okay. Okay, eight amps. Yep, 23.6 has dropped slightly best, probably because of the cables. And we'll max it out at 10 amps and see if it goes bang. 10 amps, 23.5, that is fine. Now I'm gonna load it for too long, like I said, because the uh, fan isn't working, I've done overheating. So that seems to be doing at least 10 amps for a short time, so that's fine. Happy with that. Should be a short out. See if it works. See if self protection will kicks in. Um, do I risk blowing it up? One of the dogs can hear the cats. There's a guy running around the house looking for it. <laughs> uh, yes. Do I risk? Do I risk shorting it out? What do you reckon, Rob? This will be your power supply. Do I risk shorting it and see if it happens? <laughs> Come on. What do you reckon, Rob? Do I turn it on the short and see what happens? That went too smoothly. Yes, it did. So, come on, Rob, shall I turn the short on? Should it mean, why I mean more? Okay, I'll short it. Short is on. It should be on. I can't see what it says on the display. I'm sitting on my desk. Come over here to my computer here. Well, computer here. Uh, sure. Please unlock shift lock. Oh, right, because I'm on remote. Well, I can turn the short on, but it's not actually loading it down. I'm not seeing anything. That's interesting. I don't know. It's not worrying about short for some reason. I'm turning the short on, but nothing seems to be happening. No, maybe I'll go back to the remote then.
maybe I'll just put some more current on it. Because I can shove 30 amps on it. I'll just do that. My short's gone open, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, we'll shove 20 amps on it. We'll do that instead. And load it. And it beat. What did it say? Overpower. Oh, too much. I can't do 15 because I'm running it or something, was it? No. Come on, calculate it. 24 watts. Ah, 24 volts. What's the maximum current I can go to? Yeah, God. Why can't I do this in my head? <laughs> 12 and a half amps. That's the most I can do on this to reach 300 watts. There we go. 12 and a half amps. Turn that on. There we go. That's cutting it off. You can see that dropping out now. Cycling. 12 amps. Still cycling. 11 amps. There we go. 11 amps is maxing out there. There we go. That's fine. You can do 11 amps and it starts cutting out and protecting itself. That's fine. I think I need a 600 watt dummy load. Hmm. 300 watts wasn't enough. The 5 volt power supply, it's a 75 amp power supply. Um, the 5 volt one I showed before. And it does actually do it, I've tested it. Um, well, it's not overload. Now I've got no loading on it, so it's not really working, so no fans, probably not an issue. So anyway, I'm just doing that um, testing. Um, Oh, Dave's going, is he? Thanks for dropping by, Dave. Catch you later. All right, well, it seems to be working fine. So that SAT power supply seems to be okay, apart from the new fan. Um, the STM3065 isn't currently turned on, so... Um, I'll boot it up. I might need to reconnect that when it's booted though. I don't know if it will come up or not. I've always turned them on first, then bought launch a program. So the 3065X is now on, but obviously not connected. Let me find that. Devices, 3065X. Reconnect. It's going to kick everything off, isn't it? Of course it is. Right. Found the 3065X. Bring the panel back up. There we go. Now we've got that as well. Not like we're using it right now, but yeah, it is working. PC CPU fan might fit. It's bigger than that. I think it's about an 80mm fan. Um... Off now, you know, so I don't zap myself accidentally. So it's about there to there. So, oh, maybe it's a 60 mil fan. Well, power's off now, right? So it's going to be completely safe. There's no power stored in this whatsoever, obviously. <laughs> well, look, the fan fell off. <laughs> All right. Careful what I touch, because it will be live. And also, I'm taking the joke. I'm taking a piss there. It's a 60 millimeter square fan, and it is about um, 25 mil deep, I think. I'm just measuring from the other side. Yeah, 25 mil. So 60 by 25. So that's the fan size it needs to be replaced with, and that's probably a 24 volt fan. Um, I thought I should take it out and find out, shouldn't I? Really. In the power supply, which has just been turned on. 12 volt fan. There you go, 12 volt, 2.3 watt. It's a sun on fan.
Yeah, so 60 mil fan, 25 mil thick, 12 volt, 2.3 watt. Find some of that and drop it in. Not a big deal. Um, did it have speed sensing? I think it did have speed sensing. Now it's only two connections, it's got no speed sensing on it. So it's purely 12 volt output. Well, 12 volt input, rather. So it's got no speed detection, doesn't matter. Fans around the specs. Well, it probably doesn't need to work that hard. I mean, it's been sitting in the machine for, well, say, 15 years, working away, and it's still good. I think it's done all right. Well, obviously the fan's naked, but the fact it didn't overheat, and obviously the fan is broken. So, how long has that fan been broken? Has it been broken for the past five years? Has it been broken for 10 years? Has it always been broken? Um, <laughs> maybe it's just a really chunky power supply, which has been well out of spec for the circuit it was actually powering. Maybe the, the circuit is almost only doing 5 amps or something, or maybe it peaked at 10 amps and dropped down or something like that, you know? Maybe it was only like a surge it was allowing for rather than full-time current usage, so maybe it wasn't embedding using the fan. But the fact it hasn't cooked itself with the fan being broken, it's probably a good sign. Um, well, I mean, it's just a 12-volt fan, it's not a big deal. It's just easy to fix, easy to replace. So that's all good. Um, Well, the other thing with that is I'm not sure what space is available opposite that fan. I mean, because obviously the component trees surrounding that fan as well. I think you have to stick with 60 mil. I think you wouldn't be able to get anything bigger in there. And plus then you have to you know, cut big events and stuff as well if you mess around with it. So yeah, anyway, it's fixable. Easy fixable. 60 millimeter fans, they're achievable. You can get them. Um, so yeah. So Rob, I guess you got a power supply to pick up when you do come down. Um, but obviously you have to find a fan for it. 12 volt fan, as I said. I don't think I've got one I can put in there. I'm pretty sure I don't have any 60 mil. Don't leave your house with nothing but time and parts. Yeah, I'm much the same. I stay home a lot. I don't go anywhere. I go to work and I come back. Pretty much it. I'm not an outdoor person. I'm not a social person. So, that's that one done. Um, I shall put this back together fully and put it to one side for Rob to pick up and then we'll look at the other power supply. Yeah, everything's getting cheaper and cheaper, isn't it? I just going to make my coffee. Yeah. All right. Let's disconnect all this. Let's unplug the wire because I have to set it on or something. Don't know. Have mains coming in. And loose wires floating around. Come on. jammed in there because it's got solder on the end of it. So the other one as well, we'll give that one a clean up, take it out, check it out. This one's obviously, with the other one there's only a six and a half amp, so it's a bit simpler. And it's fanless. So it's just six and a half amps and no fan, ten amps with a fan which is broken. The fact that that's got, well it's actually got more devices in it too, this has got more transistors and diodes and stuff in it. This one's a beefier supply by far. So, and it was also um, bolted directly to a metal frame. That, that plate that was there, so 
I actually think that this was probably saved by the amount of heat sinking it has on it and the fact it's got massive devices in it. And maybe it wasn't actually running at full core, uh, full belt. Where's that? There we go, it's sort of full. Screws for the fan. Yeah. I've had these sitting there for months. Oh, I don't know, probably. Oh, when did I get these? Before Christmas, so. Yeah, probably seven months I've had these sitting there. Yeah, I've got all these screws here. Those three for the brackets. These are for the case. Am I going out of shop there? You can't quite see. Oh, I probably am actually because the overlay is in the way. Oh, let's move this back a bit. This might get a crotch shot when, from time to time. Yeah. Also, I'm not going to worry about putting that on. Maybe I'll cable tie it to the outside so we know it's knackered. Or we're going to say a different word then. That's YouTube. Not appropriate. This one with this, so we know it's knackered. So don't forget, the shimmy's got a fan in it. There we go. That's that one. Just hang this out of the way. No, let's pull the other one apart and give that clean. I did the same testing on this one as well. This one's looking fairly straightforward to get apart to, I think. It's got a heat sink which is attached to the circuit board. Right, that's a little bit different. Am I going to get not putting gloves on? Possibly. And the screws are that tight actually. I think I'm going to need to put gloves on. <laughs> Let me do that. Right, so I'm going to give this a brush down outside and I'll come back.
brush down. Now I've got silicon grease on my brush, which is not going to be helpful in future jobs, but it's got this stuff here. It's still not too bad. It's a little bit dry. I might just put a new layer on there. Oh, God. And the handle, it doesn't have the glove on, so I've just got the paste on. That's why I should put two gloves on. <laughs> it's going to go everywhere now. It's now it's a disaster. It's going to be everywhere. Right. Pick up with this end. Okay, so bottom side is looking alright. It's actually looking pretty nice. Um, let's inspect the joints a little bit. It's all looking fine. I can't see any signs of any stressing or cracked joints or anything like that. Yeah, it's looking okay. There's nothing there to show out to be a concern anyway. Um, and the paste doesn't seem that bad actually. It's not as dry as the other one was, interestingly. So I might just refresh the paste on this bracket here. I'm not going to pull it all completely apart. Although I could, I'm not going to. Um, then we'll tear it, try it out. Date, still see any date codes on here. Um, it'll be the same era. Should be about mid 2000. So we got 2004 ones on the board there. That's the also the design year, not necessarily the build year. Yeah, not really seeing anything. Oh, I missed a bunch of duster in here. see any date codes anywhere apart from the one on the board itself. Anyway let's refresh the outer silicon I suppose. Oh, it's just not used to against thermal paste. We'll put some new thermal paste on this to refresh it. Leave the old one there because I'm being lazy. Because it is still kind of okay. It's just a little bit dry. Do the job. Everywhere, see? So the capacitors look okay as well. There's no signs of anything on there, no signs of leakage or anything. And I've replaced other capacitors and power supplies like um, it's like a 5 volt supply I've got sitting in my drawer over there which was thrown away because it's faulty it's dying it well, basically died it failed and I grabbed that one out of the scrap bin and um, said hey I'll grab this and they yeah sure it's broken anyway and I repaired it I did a video on it I think and um, just cut a bad caps um, and it actually leaked to the bottom of the cap but these aren't showing any signs of that that I can see at least so I've got no reason to suspect anything at this point Put the board in first, then we'll um, clamp it down. Well, kind of bolt the board in, we'll get them in place, at least get the screws in. So let's tighten up and down and loosen off again so it can move. So it gives it all a chance to realign itself.
needs a counter sunk anyway, so they should be lined up. There's our nice and firmly. Because before these mean power supplies, my experience with them has been good. You know, the various types they do, I've always had no issues with them. <laughs> They've also got some on there as well. <laughs> Probably on the top of there, yes. Yeah, Let's give it this. I'll come and check the chat again in a minute. Um, 30 volt, that's right. So, okay, I'll come and check the chat now. And we'll put it back together afterwards. Oh, Fred's gone. Catch you later, Fred. Might take his glove off. Oh, I think I'm safe now. Uh, I've missed a lot of chat. The um, 5 volt to 75 amp power supply, I bought that especially to do a calibration adjustment of my Maynell, um Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know, Maynew? I, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, the DC electronic load I've got. Because I was doing something with that, I think I was... The calibration was slightly off it, I wasn't happy with it. It's, it's off by a bit too much of my liking. And it's consistently that way. So I thought, well, I'll just give it a tweak and I'll get the calibration better. Anyway, I completely messed it up because I didn't have a big enough electronic load to load the thing down, a uh, big enough power supply to load it properly. So I've got a 35 amp Astron VS uh, 35M power supply. I thought I could use that because that's more than 30 amps, right? Um, but it turns out that the load was causing the power supply to crow by itself. So um, it didn't work. So I ended up buying this 75 amp power supply because it has to be high wattage. It has to be achieved with 300 watts and stuff like that, so I had to buy that. Um, um, yeah, so that's why I've got that power supply. I bought it just to do that calibration, and I did that, and I haven't used it again since. But it's there. I'm sure I'll find a use for it one day. Another one. Just talking chat with chat. Okay, I think I'm caught up. Okay, right. Let's put this thing back together fully. So I don't accidentally touch something which is going to kill me. And um, power it up and see if it works. you got two Astron 35s, yeah, they're really good power supplies. I've had mine for 30 years, <laughs> and I've never done anything to it apart from maybe tweak the adjustment of the meters in the front. That's about it. I think it's due for a recap, though, to be honest. I, I think, actually, I pulled it apart last year. I'll tell you, I pulled, I pulled it apart last year and um, cleaned the dust out of it and put it back together, basically. It's fine. I cleaned the pots on the front, that's right, the controls on the front were getting dirty. So I had to pull it apart for that. They were getting a bit crunchy and voltage was jumping over the place. So I cleaned the pots up on the front and that was fine after that. Drinking the coffee my wife made me. Right. Um, oh, this needs dusting as well. I'll be right back.
Okay, back again. Luckily the door to the outside is not very far away from the door to my office. So this um, slides on one way or another. Which way does that slide? That's right, it goes that way, that side. Then it slides forwards. There we go. Is that right? And I need the screw, which is over here. Got the plastic rivet. Can I separate this and reuse it? Sometimes you can. Yep, there we go. Right, let's hook the wires up. Oh, what a fitting spun around, the actual plate that's on there spinning around sideways. Don't like that. The plastic surround must be a bit weak. Probably just help that I'm just trying to cramp in a wire without a fitting on it. Ground wire. So you think this view is better than the one I normally use, which is the side view? And do you think this camera is also slightly blurry? Because I think it is slightly blurry. I'm pretty sure I need to pull it apart and put a lens on it, as I said before. I think I need to adjust that. Pretty sure it's actually it's not quite focused right. I tried doing manual focusing, I couldn't get any better than it is on the auto. It wouldn't actually go past that point. I could only go more blurry. I couldn't get it sharper and then more blurry. So it's like at the end of its adjustment range, you know? So I'm pretty sure it is not actually set correctly. Just like the other two cameras, both of those I should adjust. And once I did that, they got a lot better. It made a massive difference to them. I was actually surprised that the fact that they all this time they've never been as good as they should have been. Right. Live, neutral, earth, negative, positive. Right, we are set up. Um, we've got the ED over here, which will plug the plug in. You ready to turn it on? Let's move it down a little bit in case it gets some magic smoke. Um, I have to make sure I change the electronic load settings as well before I turn the load on. The load is off, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Power on. We have 24.03 volts. Excellent. And no magic smoke. Okay, let's load this thing up and see if it works. And can I make this bigger? I can make it bigger. How's that? Oh, look at that. See it much easier now, can't you? Um, don't look at the Siglent, the 1065X, look at the load because obviously I don't have the multimeter hooked up. Let me check the chat again. Yeah, not parallel. Yeah, this one, yeah, right, do do some weird stuff. Wasn't blown up yet, sitting there, that's good. So the you talk about tweezers, the um I guess you mean soldering iron tweezer dear. I've supposed to been getting a tweezer SMD tweezer multimeter from Shannon. The one uh, you may have seen Dave receive one. Shannon's been trying to send me one for a couple of months, 
and they got sent back. <laughs> they had problems trying to get them to me. So I don't know if they're still coming. I don't know. But um, I'm hoping it does. Yeah. Um, okay, let's, let's stick on here in case it goes bang, shall we? We'll stay on there in case it goes bang. Can I zoom in? Yeah, not the right place. All right. Okay, let's get the setup up. Let's go to one amp. Set to one amp. Turn the load on. There we go, do one amp, that's just fine. Two amps. Don't forget this is supposed to be six and a half amps rated. Two amps is doing fine. Four. Yeah, that's looking all right. Obviously, we don't know if there's any noise on the output, so I haven't checked for obviously is noise because I, you know, really should scope it and see if it's collapsing or just making a hell of a mess. Because you know, all we're seeing is the average voltage, but it's looking okay so far. Usually, you see them collapse before anything else. Six amps. That's starting to drop a little bit. Twenty-three point seven there, but then it could be the cables because I'm drawing a bit of power through them. Let's do seven amps. Don't forget, it's rated at six and a half. So we're exceeding the rating right now, and it's still okay. Eight. It's dropping, but it's still managing it. Still managing eight amps. Okay, let's go ten. There we go. Now it's collapsed. Okay, nine. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like eight is the absolute maximum this thing can do. Back to eight again. Yeah, it's probably collapsed down now. So we'll turn the load off, and I should come back. Yep, that's fine. So. It's doing its maximum current at least and exceeding it, so that one seems fine. Um, so that's good. That power supply is working okay as well. Um, nothing to fix. I was expecting to be bad capacitors in there and stuff like that, but they look fine. I mean, obviously, obviously, I should. Really, to do this properly, I should take them out and test them. Well, at least test them in circuit, at the very least. But um, as it's working properly, I've got no reason to suspect them anything. I mean, obviously, they use decent caps in there. And it's been sitting here for months. And you think if they're going to fail, we've been sitting after six months, it would have potentially weakened the caps because their dielectrics will break down from uh, don't have a chance to recover themselves. What's this power supply for? It was out of a machine, piece of industrial equipment. So that piece of equipment was scrapped before Christmas, and I grabbed a bunch of parts from it. So um, I got two power supplies and a whole bunch of other stuff as well which I have out in my other room, in a big box. I'd like to get some decent soldering tweezers. I would really like some. Um, I did approach a couple of brands. I've approached... Um, who did I approach? I've forgotten. Anyway, there were some brands which do make soldering tweezers and like proper ones, soldering station type. Um, and they never even replied to my inquiries saying about, hey, do you want to do a sponsorship? And no response, so that was an obviously a no. <laughs> um, which is a shame. But I did have those Yeeha ones, or Yeeha, Yeeha, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, which I did a review on a few years back. And they work. But they're not good. The, the tolerances are not very good on them. They're a bit of play in them, that sort of stuff. So, I mean, yes, I did a review and I said, yes, they do do solder, but, you know, they're not great. The tips aren't very good quality. They're quite large tips on them. So, if you're doing something quite large, I did say this in the video, I think. So, if you're doing something quite large, they're okay, but smaller stuff won't be. Because of the fact that the actual tips twist sideways and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Um, the Banggood one, those were from Banggood. 
So I think they're from Rengo. I think I bought them. I could have bought them. I'm not sure, actually. I may have bought them. I know I was looking at them. But I, I don't know. I could have been from Rengo. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, I need something better. Not some proper brand ones, you know, like um, Wellers or something like that. You know, some decent brand. I don't know. Is Wellers still a decent brand? I don't know. <laughs> uh... Oh, nice handle for the KSGR. Yeah, the nice handle makes a big difference. The KSGR, one well, the handle came in mine, it was a plastic handle. Didn't like it. Um, um, and then I bought the aluminium handle for it, and that was just much nicer to use. So that's in my other lab now, out there, which I was using here for ages until I got the uh, Jabe station instead. Yeah, it's the only reason I got rid of it because, well, I got rid of it, it's in the you know, other room, but um, it's in the other lab. But the only reason I moved it out of this room is because I've got the Jabe station, which is better. Is there a new version of the case here? Is there? I haven't looked at them for a while. I mean, this one I've got is that's some bang good, and I got that. That must be four years ago, maybe three years ago, I'm not sure. I oh, got the carbon fiber one. Okay, I still better than the plastic one. JVC, that's one of the companies I approached. I approached JVC to see if they'd send me one, and they didn't even reply. So yeah, that was a no. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so that power supply is obviously still working. It's sitting there, twenty-four volts, just idling away quite happily. What is a T3B? Um, I saw you mention it a couple of times. I meant to go and look at it, what it actually is. Uh, I'm trying to find it again now. You gave the full name. Don't bother. It's a while ago. The only problem, Joey, is you got to send it to me, then it's got to arrive. <laughs> You know, do you really think that the postal system is going to manage it this time? <sighs> T3B. Um, let's have a look. Axion. Right, that's right, you mentioned. Yes, that's right. I, was, I think I was looking at these, actually, a while ago. Um, I think... SDG Electronics, Steve. I think he did a review of this meet of this meter of this iron, didn't he? I think it was him that did it, and um, that made me think about getting one. But did it have the one I wanted? Yeah, it's just a, yeah, it's just like a nice station. I was going to get one just because it looked like a good thing to do a review on. Um. I think I may have even bookmarked it on Banggood. I'm not sure. It's definitely on AliExpress anyway. Um, yeah, but what I actually need is a tweezer. Proper decent SMD tweezer. Um, soldering iron, you know, soldering station for that. I need a decent one. But, you know, SMD is okay, but sometimes you're trying to do something in a circuit board which is already pre made, like I'm trying to repair something, and it's got SMD parts. You have to use soldering iron to try and get the whole thing, you know, melted out and out. Um, hot air, sometimes you can't do it because you've got punctury around it and you might damage them. So having a, a, a tweezer which you can get in there would be nice, but um, even that sometimes won't work because she's got too much stuff around them. That's really what I want it for. So when I get situations where I've got stuff which is packed in and I've got a pre-existing board, I need to get that thing out of there. Instead of messing around trying to get it out with a soldering iron, you know, trying to heat the whole thing up and go side to side, or maybe using two irons. You know, I've done that before. Um, I'd like a tweezer, but so none of these brands so far have replied to my email saying, "Hey, do you want to do a sponsorship?" Mm, that's not, oh well, never mind. Guess I'm not big enough yet. Maybe one day. Um, oh yeah, here we go. Here's Steve's video, number two thirty-two. Yeah, so he did review it. So, so I was, that's where I've seen it. So yeah, but yeah, um, no, Joe, I don't need one. Thanks. I've got. I've got the other. I've got plenty of standard irons. I don't need any more. Um, if I want one of those, I can get Banger to send me one for free. 
Um, which is what I was thinking about doing actually after I saw Steve's video. T3A is nicer, but any other better clones take all the JBC handles? Oh, yeah, okay. Although, you have to be careful though, because you get a lot of things where, say, especially on AliExpress, you'll see lots of things which look the same. On the servers, and if you look, if you look really closely, you'll see actually the subtle differences between different suppliers. There might be, you know, one is a clone of a clone of a clone, and then there'll be subtle differences. So you might get one which is really good, which is what it's based from. Then you'll find other ones which are look the same on the surface, but reality is they're not made as well. Well, the componentry is not as good, or it doesn't work as well, you know. Um, the quality is not quite as good. So it does pay to be really picky when you've got lots of clones to make sure you get the right clone. Um, and that's sometimes the hard thing to do from pictures, because sometimes the pictures aren't right either. Um, I'm trying to send it to Andre. Okay, no worries. That's fine, carry on. <laughs> I've got the I've got a clone FX951, which I picked up maybe five years ago. It's one of the first ones I got from Banggood, I think. Um and I didn't like it. I did a review on it, and I found the construction wasn't very good, it wasn't earthed properly. I had some kind of fault with it, I can't remember what it was now. It wasn't earth fault, was it? It might have been. Um, and I didn't like the way you had to have a little plug in card to change the settings. You had to plug a little card in to change the settings on it. I was it locked and stuff like that. It's like, didn't like it. I didn't like the interface. And it's just like, why do people buy these? They're not very good. I don't like them. But maybe it's just a clone I had. Maybe the clone is like, well, this isn't great. Um, obviously, an original Rule 951 won't have the manufacturing issues that my one had. Um, but the actual user interface I expect is the same. And that's the bit I really didn't like. And I used it for a while um, until I got the KSGR that replaced it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can put a digital meter, but I actually prefer analog meters for things like that, for currents, because you can see them drifting a lot more. Digital displays, because of the updating, you're trying to read the numbers and they're updating. I actually don't like digital displays as much for current readouts. I actually prefer analog, because you get to see little fluctuations and stuff like that and drifts, you know, quick, um, quick movements, not drifts. So you can actually see if you know, something changes quickly, pops up and comes down again, you can see it on an analog meter. With digital meter, you might not see like, noise on the display, you won't actually be able to read it or see what happened. So things like that, I actually prefer analog. Uh, they do actually have a place. But I think the meters on the Astrons are actually fairly all damped. They're, they're quite slow reacting, aren't they? They're quite buffered. You know, they're not really quick acting. They're quite slow. So um, dampened. I don't know. Is that buying two axioms? Oh yeah. Well, the power supply is still going. Hasn't gone bang, so I guess that one's all right. I mean, that's not under load though. It's just sitting at 24 volts. No, no loading. Um, let's put some load on it again. Let's put one amp on it and leave it sitting here. One amp, shall we? Um, actually, let's do two amps. That's still a third of its rating. I don't know if it relies on um, airflow from an external source. As there's no fan built in, but it's an open frame, so it's, maybe that relies on just getting the heat out from the frame. I don't know. You know, leave a single two amps for a while, see what happens. <laughs> anyway, so that's two power supplies done. I've got another one somewhere. Or well, at least one. I've probably got a couple more, actually. Things I've salvaged from work. Um, yeah, I have to look, actually. I've... Yeah, I'm wondering now. I'm sure I've got another one. I'm just wondering where the hell it is. 
Anyway, I guess I have to figure it out in my own time. I think something I'd like to get is a iron with a smaller tip. I, I tried this has got the um, a two four five tip on it. This JB, right? So this is your setup I've got for this one. And it, so last time I did it, and I I got those smaller tips I was going to use on it, and they end up just being a disaster. And they glowed red, and it, was like, oh, it wasn't good. So um, so I think I might need to get like a dedicated iron just for doing really fine tips so sometimes you want really small SMD work like really fine stuff um, and this iron's too big for that the KSGR um, I've probably got tips which are maybe small enough for that but probably not actually I'm looking for finer than that so yeah I think it's Heiko does those little mini irons don't they I think it's Heiko doing but um, I don't know if I'll bother with that or not, but I don't get that situation very often. I need to do really fine stuff, and it's just easier to have a really small iron. Um, I've got some pretty fine tips for this thing, but sometimes it's nice to have really small stuff, to just really, you know, your small iron handle and a small tip, so you can just really fine work and feel a lot better what you're doing. You're not so clunky, you know. Um, but yeah, between getting a small iron and also getting a tweezer, um, those are things I'd like to get, but. Maybe in time I'll get sponsorship and I'll be able to get them, but right now I'm not really too worried. It's just be nice. It's actually 25 degrees in here. It's the hottest it's been in here for ages. <laughs> I'll have to open a window actually. I'm sitting here this bit hot. It's supposed to be winter. What's it outside? 20 degrees outside. Hmm. C210 bent tip is horrible. Um, I prefer the um, knife tip. The knife tip's the one I prefer. Because it's got a nice fine tip on the end of it, obviously, but it's the pointy bit. And then if you need a large area, you can fold it around sideways and do it. But the, the bent tips, I think you just get too much heat loss for them. I mean, yes, you can like do flow, uh, reflow soldering, like running long chips and stuff like that with them. It just doesn't catch on them, that sort of stuff. They're good for that. But um, yeah, that, I'm not too keen on the bent tips as well. The knife tip is one I, I prefer. Bent tips are okay. I've got bent tips here. Um, I think I've got them on this one. I've got them in the KSGR at least. Yeah, I don't have bent tips here. But the KSGR's got them. I use this what I used on that. Um, when you get used to it, I suppose it's not so bad. But if you're trying to use the very tip of it, you get a lot of thermal loss. So it's not so great in that way. Um, yeah, well, the power supply is sitting at two amps just fine. So it's doing what's it say? Forty-seven watts on the load, nearly forty-eight watts, which you can't see here. Oh, yes, you can. Um, and it's using supply is fifty-eight watts. So it's losing 10 watts to generate that 48. I think it's idle was 10 watts, wasn't it? If I just turn the load off a minute. Idle was 5.5 watts. It's the other one, just 10 watts idle. Oh, there's only three tips. Yeah, okay, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. The clone tips, there's a very limited selection of clone tips. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. Is my view looking weird? No? Uh, it must just be my viewer here. Okay. And I've only dropped 162 frames since I started. That's good. Right, so that's those power supplies done. Real one's 125. Hmm. The 
what else can we look at today? Oh, I was looking at the, thinking about doing the um, Heathkit stuff, wasn't I? I was looking at putting a Heathkit part, maybe. So I want to do a video on that, though, so I'm not quite sure what, even in the right mindset to do videos at the same time as live streaming. It's, it takes a lot of concentration. Hmm. So Clive is still live, and Fran is now live as well. Let's have a quick look at that. And Curious Mark has just done a video on the HP 5342A micro frequency counter. I've done some videos on those. Um, I've done three, maybe four videos on those. I've appeared a couple of them anyway. I've still got one. I think it's in my drawer over there actually. I've sold one. Why have I sold two? Don't remember actually. Definitely sold one. But I've got one here I've still kept because it's really good. So 18 gigahertz it goes up to. And um, I did a couple of videos on those. But he's just done one apparently. I'll have to look at that later on. But yeah, I was just popping to see if um, Clive is still streaming in the years. Kiss Analog. I think I've heard that. I don't know that one. I think I've heard of it, or maybe I've seen it once, I'm not sure. Oh, right, yeah. I, I don't really resonate with Fran too much, and what she does, I mean, she does some good stuff, but it doesn't really resonate with what I do. You know, it's it's not really in my interest. Well, my interest is more of my, um, the realm of what I do. You know, it's, she does different stuff, and she's more topical stuff, and... That's not really what I watch videos about, so I watch her videos occasionally, but she does some interesting things like you know, mixed tubes and things like that, and she play with them or weird technology. But I don't watch many of her videos. Um Okay, well I'll catch you later, mate. Just let me know when you wanna come down. So I'm available, I think, just about every weekend for the next three months. So um, when you're available, um, we can sort something out. So you got seven of those with working ovens. Yeah, I've got um, OCXOs, ones I had OCXOs in them. I think I did a repair on something like that, actually. What was, what was the one I did? I think the other one wasn't working and I repaired it. Is that right one? Might have been. Don't remember too well. Anyway, I don't have videos about them anyway, so, you know. <laughs> okay, no worries, Friday House. Well, um, there's only a couple of things I know about. I saw hand got. Taltech, which is just leaving, and um, Kiori. I don't know if there's anyone else here. I don't know. New Zealand's a pretty small country, it really. Is. There's not a big base. I mean, not people around, but. People don't watch my channel? I don't know. Not many people do. Not from this country, anyway. Uh. Well, that's still sitting on two amps just happily, not dropping off. That's working fine. Right, I think I might turn that load off now. It's looking like it's handling it just fine. Two amps for ages. What's that? Five minutes, two amps. Tolkien? No, I don't hear really about it. Old news. Lord of the Rings. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, right, let's get this power supply off here. Let's change views. So, the problem having that banner across the bottom there, which has stayed in place, even though I've quit the app, but the actual um, screen capture, it keeps that display on the window, even though it's gone.
Um, right, let's just turn this off. Turn these off. So it's holding the display on the window, which is a little bit annoying. Because once I close the app, I actually want that bar just there to disappear. Or is it just there, that bar? I want that to go when I close it, but it stays there. It's like the operating system doesn't recognise that it's vanished. It's closed. It's like it's not closing properly or something. And so it just, I don't know, maybe it just stores a memory until it gets an updated one. I don't know. But I don't know how that works. Okay. Well, that was annoying. <laughs> is my stream working still? I think it is. Right, I think we're still going. I hope we're still going. Everything just died. Had to reboot the computer. Everything. That was annoying. Right. I think we're still streaming. Let me know in the chat. Are we still going? No one chatting. I've reloaded a page, hopefully it's okay. Seems like it's going. Okay, I'll carry on. Right. Power aren't they great? But it shows you how quickly I can restart my computer. <laughs> right. That's what I was doing. Call this power supply done. Um, yeah, six and a half amp power supply. What am I gonna do with it? I don't know. Something. I just missed it. My desk was still. With these for anything. What do you reckon? Should I keep these? Could it be handy for hooking up something? Maybe? Am I just being a bit of a holder? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> probably. Can you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, you probably could. Okay. Alright. Let's those lights off. At least for now. Might help us stop it getting so hot in here. Okay, where are we? Back to chat. Can I check the oddies of pinholes? Okay, mate. <laughs> it's dropping by. Um. So the 535i is an external assembly got some input as well. I think the 535, uh, 5342a had input on it as well. I think it did, yes. Actually, that might have been one of the problems I had, is I was switching, I had to use an external input, and it worked. Internal input wouldn't work. And I had to repair something with that. I don't know exactly what it was now. Yeah, it tells you on the front whether it's using... Whether the internal oscillator is warmed up, it's the right. I told you that as well. Um, 
something like that. It's going to bug me now. I need to look. And because I changed, well, because I had to reboot my computer, can you see that flickering in there? I need to go and reset the cameras to be 50 hertz. Give me a second. This will take me a minute or so. Well, probably not either. maybe it will take a minute, I don't know. Uh, 50 hertz. I've got three cameras to change over, so I need to do those. And the last one. 50 hertz. Flicker should be gone. All right. Wish that fitting, fitting. Wish that setting would stay fixed when I actually um, change that setting. It changes on the cameras, but when you unplug the cameras and plug it back in again, it loses it. I wish it was like a camera stored setting. So when you changed it, it stored on the camera and it always stayed the same. But it doesn't do that. You have to set it every time. Anyway, um, HP five three five uh, four two. I have nine videos on those <laughs> from uh, two units most of it's from one unit it looks like capacitor aperture measurement testing component testing having a first look front down front panel tear down and repair um, OCXO installation cal calibration TCXO calibration so I had a TCXO apparently. Or oh, I had a TCXO and I changed it to an OCXO. A new to assembly testing. Something like that. Anyway, so yeah, I've got nine videos on those things. Yeah, I've got a Rubidium as well. I've got to see on my shelf up here. I did a video on it, of course. Built a little box for it and stuff like that. Tony is, uh, yeah, he's, he's got these distribution amplifiers and stuff like that. I actually, I did buy a distribution amplifier. It was a 75 ohm one, not a 50 ohm one. But I was going to convert it. it. Shouldn't be that hard. But I've never actually got around to it. It's just like, well, all my gear has got OCXOs in it anyway, right? Um, everything that can have a reference on it has got an OCXO. I was sort of thinking, well, yeah, if I run a Rubidium, I've got to run it always. It should, you know, really stay on. And I don't use that gear that often. You know, stuff which has the OCXOs in it or, you know, references that need to be that precise. Um, I don't really use them that much. And then when I am doing those measurements, I don't need that level of accuracy. Um, so in my other lab there, which is more like the RF stuff, um, that's where I need the accuracy doing that. But even then, I don't really need Rubidium standard precision. You know, OCXO is fine. <laughs> you know, so I've got, I've got a Rubidium in here, which is handy to have. And um, I turn it on from time to time and just use it. I've used it in a few videos. And I've also got a GPSDO as well, which is out in the other lab, which I was going to hook up out there. I haven't got around to it yet, just sitting there waiting for me to do it. I did a video on that. Uh, before Christmas, I think it was. Maybe about a year ago. Yeah, so GPS DOs are um, okay, but is a GPS disciplined oscillator, so it's still an oscillator which is free running, which is then linked to GPS to basically make corrections. So I'm not sure which is better, really. I mean, GPS DOs based on cesium, but then in between those checks, it's drifting. Um, whereas rubidium should be basically rock solid once it's warmed up and stabilised. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so I have rubidium. I have GPS DO. Neither of which I really use. <laughs> Because OCXOs are good enough in most situations, it's just don't need to be that precise, really. Depends what you're doing, of course. 
Right. Anyway, that pacifier works, so that's good. Um, we should tinker around with something else next, I suppose. What should we do next? I could use another coffee. I wonder if I can bribe the wife to bring a coffee in. I'll send her a message. Uh, yeah. See what happens. I can hear footsteps. Hope it comes in here. It's getting hot on horror in here. It's 25 degrees. It's got by about 0.4 of a degree since I opened the window. It's not helped. Anyway, we need to think of something else. What else are we going to work on? So, done power supplies. Um here she comes. On condition that you don't fuse the house again. It's fine. <laughs> oh, Danish native, okay, thanks for dropping by. Catch you later. Yes, anyway. So I opened here when the power went out. I turned off the power supply to the power supply. You know what I mean? I turned off the power to it. So I turned off the um, running thing through an auto transformer, then through the hopper meter. That's how I plug things in mostly. And as I touched the neutral, um, the neutral was obviously not switched, and it gave a bit of leakage. Must be a bit of leakage on that rail or something to the earth, and that tripped the RCD, which is why I think went off. So. Um, that was annoying. Anyway, but there's no, there's nothing unsafe. It just had enough leakage to make the RCE trip. Well. <laughs> Didn't fuse the house. It's an RCD. It's fine. This, there's, because it does have a bit of bias. Like once it's tripped, this isn't the first time I tripped this thing. Um, you can't actually just turn it back on again. It won't actually latch. You have to turn off a couple of circuits, then turn it on, then flip the circuits on. Because um, it is obviously a bit of an imbalance in there um, from the cumulative build-up across all the circuits it's powering. So um, it's obviously just enough to throw it over. <laughs> anyway. But it's when I touch the neutral on that um, power supply. Power, power was off. I just had unplugged it. And uh, that was enough. Must have just been enough earth leakage to make it go. It's not the first time I've done it. I usually remember to unplug things first. It wasn't live, it's just yeah, leakage. Right. So I need to think of something else. What else can I think of? Um I was looking at that camera, wasn't I? Looking at I might have got that mess on my desk now. I don't want to get that dust in there. We won't do that just yet. RCDs, yeah. I've got RCDs. Multiple RCDs. The whole house has got RCDs on it. Every, everything has got RCDs. Um, just afford not to. Can't afford not to, really. So, the... Um, that's the I've got... I think it's three circuits on each RCD, so I've got an RCD does this room, um, does the living room, and I think one of the bedrooms it does as well. So that one RCD does has three circuits. Something like that anyway. But yeah. Yeah. It's quite a place to have RCDs and protection devices. In case you did do something stupid. I didn't do something stupid, it just leakage. 
It was just enough to throw it over. 10 milliamp RCD. That, that might be an idea, actually. Put a smaller RCD just in this room to try and not do the whole, well, into half the house, I suppose. <laughs> um, I should put a smaller one in this room just so it goes first. Hmm. Should do, eh? Yeah, anyway. It's fine. It's definitely really hot. It's, the temperature's still going up. I might have to turn the air conditioning on. Well, now it's starting to get a bit of a breeze outside. But now it's 21 degrees outside. It's, it's getting hotter outside as well. So. Okay. I think I'm finally losing battle here. Let's turn the RCD, uh, RCD on. Turn the air conditioning on. Uh. Yesterday I had it on a heater. I had it heating yesterday. And I got it cooling. Yeah, anyway. Right, so anyway, we need to think about something else. We don't have house Okay, so I'll keep saying. Um, this is a bit of a spoiler. I've got this thing. You know what it is? You'll see the mailbag video, not this week, well not tomorrow, um, 12 hours time, um, but next week you'll see it. I'll, I'll show you the box and some bits in it, but I don't go into a lot of detail about it. I do explain what it is though. Um, so, this is going to be really handy. Now, everyone's gone off. Furiously googling CZUR to see what it is. Who knows what it is? Oh, good one, David. You're onto it. I saw it featured on Curious Mark's channel. He had one. I think he got a review one. And um, I saw that I thought, that's actually really good. I, I want one of them. And I can't remember if I actually. I think I approached them. I'm pretty sure. Um. They could have approached me, I can't remember which way around it was, but likely I approached them. Yeah. Where do you want it? Just put it here. Yeah. Thanks. So anyway, he had it on his channel, I thought that'd be really good for me, because um, I'll tell you all about it, right? So it is a document scanner, as David said. So the idea is that you can get manuals and stuff like this and digitally scan them. It will OCR them and you can turn them to PDFs and it, and it actually does A3. So you can actually do, you know, page to page like this and scan that in and make a digital copy. I thought, well, that's great for, you know, when I'm working on gear, getting manuals. And sometimes I get a physical manual, but it's not an electronic one. And that's happened a few times. And I thought well, that'd be good because now I can scan these manuals in and make electronic copies and share them with people and add them to the Patreon as well. Um, some of these manuals are massive though, so it might take a while. But there's actually software for my Mac. They've actually got a Mac version of software, which makes it even better. So I've already installed the software, haven't tried using it. I actually need to record that video probably tomorrow. Actually, I need to get the thing out and actually do a review video on that tomorrow. Uh, I doubt I'll do it today. I'll be probably a bit tired. Um, but I need to get that done. Now I'll do a document scanner, which I thought would be really good because although it's not electronics, you know, it's still related because you can use it to scan manuals and upload them to websites and make them available to people, which is why I thought this would be a good one because it's not just for my benefit for getting a piece of free gear. It means I can actually share the manuals I've got. You know, you know the times where I have them where there's no electronic version. So it is to other people's benefit as well. That's the plan anyway. And uh, from what I've seen of it, it looks pretty impressive. But uh, obviously, I haven't even used it myself yet, so I could be completely wrong. But what I've seen appears impressive. Uh, anyway. So, what should we tinker with now? Um, now, so I've been meaning to build for a long time. A long time. 
is the cable for the Solotron 7075. Remember, we did a live stream a while ago now, and we actually replaced the socket on the front of the 7075 with a different type of round socket because the original one was does um, what's the name? What's the name of them? Those round plugs. Can't think of the name. Um, they're expensive. They're hard to get and they're expensive when you can get them. But they're really high quality. But I found some seemingly as good quality but slightly smaller, far cheaper sockets and plugs. So that's what I saw on there. And it's still round and I made a... I, at the time on a, a live stream I 3D printed a adapter for it as well. Like a, a collar. So it fits the front panel nicely and it looks really nice. Actually it come out quite good. It looks really good. It looks like it's original. No, it's not Heroes, it's something else. Um, hold on. This is the original cable, right? This is the original. This is what's supposed to be in there. I've, got, I've only got one of these. Um, I'm trying to read the text on it. can't really read it, it doesn't really stand out well enough. Can't wait, it's got, I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, these are expensive and hard to find. So, I swapped it out with a different type, which looks very similar, but it's smaller. It's like a clone, but it's a high quality clone. And I want to basically make a cable like this, with the other plug. Um, I've already put a plug on the cable but I haven't done this end. And it was so long ago now I don't remember what wire colours I used. Or even the plug pin out. I might have to do some reverse engineering before I can do it. Um, but this is my original Solitron one. Well it's not original but someone's made this obviously. This was expensive cable. I think this was about $150 to buy this cable. Um, might be more than that actually. That's why I don't want to buy another one, because I actually intend to sell that Solitron 7075. And um, I've got most of it done. I just need to put the banana jacks on the end of it, so then I can set it. I mean, I could always put crimps on it instead, crimp the cables on, but it's not so good. But I, I was going to put banana jacks on, so it's like a clone of this one, basically. This with the, the plug on it, the 7075. I thought I was going to sell it, because that meter works okay. I've just got no use for it anymore. I can't think what it's called now, what the name is for that connector. But they're expensive. Just the plugs. Oh, I think actually it might be about 200 bucks for that cable actually. I think it was over 200 bucks for that cable actually. I think it might be closer to 300. Because the plugs, just to get the plug was over 100. If you could get them. There's one place I said they sell them, um, but, well, said they had them, and nah, I inquired about them and I never got a reply. So I guess I haven't got them anymore then. Um, yeah, so I've got a cable which is half made, which we did start on the live stream because we did the conversion of the unit. I didn't make the cable, so there's the plug. You see it's the same style, but smaller. All right. It's a locking plug as well, so it does lock in. It's got a collar which locks on. And um, So I've basically made that much of the cable. Right, The cable's done, but I need to put banana jacks on the end of it. I need to run some fine leads off it and that sort of stuff. Um, it's been sitting there for ages. Because I bought some fine leads. Well, I bought some banana cables with the intention of using them for this. And I got and thought... They look a bit nice to cut up, really. I didn't want to cut them in half. <laughs> so, so that kind of hindered that, because oh, they're a bit too good. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Well, too nice a cable. They're probably not high quality enough from AliExpress, but they're not wonderful cables, but they actually look too nice to cut up. It's like a bit of a waste. So 
that's why that one didn't progress any further yet. But it's going to happen. I don't know if we should do it now, though. It's not Limo, no. I forgot what they're called. I'm going to have to. Hold on. Let's just do a quick search. If I can type it. Um, Seeing Salatron's used on lots of stuff. Which causes me problems trying to find the actual name before. Um, I find them made by Swiss company. It says that much. I found that much. Um, Fisher connector. Fisher. That's the one. Yeah, Fisher connector. There we go. Fisher. <sighs> yeah, I can stop bugging me. Really. Now I have to sit there thinking, what the hell was that thing called? Anyway, so yes, so this is basically a clone, which is very similar design to a fish connector. And the quality looks really similar as well. Um, but these are off AliExpress. You know, it's, it's a nice connector. Anyway. Um, so, and it's also five pin, so even though it's really small, it's five pin. So you can't really see on the camera. But uh, yeah, I'm probably going about that way too much. Okay. That's a put. So I wanted. To, I mean, I've had this thing. If I'm stringing a sentence together, it'd be great. The um, <laughs> I've been to sell this 7975 for about a year, and I didn't have a cable, so then I had to do the conversion, which I did. Maybe eight months ago, I think it was. I think it's when I did that in the live stream. And I converted the actual unit. And then, um, yeah, I had to do the cable, obviously. And that's where I've kind of stalled. And I kind of need to do that so I can sell the multimeter. You know, I, w I don't need it. It can do up to seven and a half digits in certain range. I think it's like the 10 volt range or whatever it is. It can do the seven and a half digit meeting. Um, about that it does less digits but it's got a quite long integration time so it takes a while to actually take a reading when you're doing that kind of precision it's going to select how many digits you want and um, the more digits you want the longer it takes something like that anyway what the hell was it it was something like that you've got an integration time and that, that, then that's right you just choose how long you want to cycle for and then you get number of digits to suit that um, so yeah that's how it's set up It works quite nicely, but um, it's got really beautiful Powerflex displays in them and that sort of stuff. You know, old, but um, it works alright. I've serviced it, I did a video on um, recapping the power supplies and checking it out and stuff like that. And it works alright. I just need to set up, and I can't set it without cable, obviously. So I need to get the cable done, really. But I don't really think making a cable was really video worthy. You know, do I, is someone going to watch a video about me, me putting some banana plugs on a cable? Probably not. And if I do watch it, I'm not going to stick around for very long. <laughs> anyway. So, yes, that was uh, something I need to get done. Um, I know I'm forgetting something. There was something I was going to look at today. It wasn't just the Heathkit stuff. I can't think what it was. 
I'm looking around wildly, just trying to sort of think, is it that? Is it that? Um, yeah, nah, not really. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know what it was. There's something else I was going to look at. It's not on my pile, what's the problem? Oh well, um, we'll figure something out. Oh dear, thirsty, you're talking too much. I've got this thing. Got an LED light we could look at. Apparently it flickers. I've got pan the mains cable there. Look, I'm going up to power. I'm already halfway there, aren't I? This is something someone's given to me to have a look at for them. Um, they've had it in use for a couple of years and apparently it started flickering and uh, yeah, it doesn't quite work right. Like, coffee drunk. Let's rejig my desk and change camera view so you can see what I'm doing. I need to get an automatic switch up and go and get another one. That one I built, that uh, infrared sensor automatic switcher. We should do something with that and get that back up and going again. Alright. Get some lights back here. Let's just clean the dust and crap off this. I was tempted to do a video on this because strangely LED lights actually do quite well in videos. So I've done some video of LED repairs before, you know, downlight repairs and stuff like that, and they actually perform quite well. Even though it's not a particularly exciting thing. Because it's quite domestic, you know, it's LED lights and people got down lights which LED and they fail and they start flickering and that sort of stuff. This is covered in fly spots which is a bit disgusting, but uh, um, Put some gloves on. Make it slightly less disgusting. As you can see, it's got lots of LEDs. Maybe you can see. All right. Maybe you can see it like that. A bit less exposed that way. Lots of reflection off those lights, isn't it? Um, but yeah, lots of LEDs. Now I was looking around at it when uh, I was given this, and it, when the guy said, "Ah, oh, it starts to flicker after a little while. And it pulses on and off." I said, well, that's like a symptom of a dead LED. And I was looking around all these LEDs, and I saw a couple which looked slightly dark. It weren't too bad, it just looked a little bit darker than the ones next to it. There's one there. I think that's one of them. So I was going to put a little mark by the ones I think might be suspicious. Um, 
what I did actually see is a group of them which all look like on the same section of the circuitry. I mean, the thing is, they've all got this kind of dark end on one end. So it could just be slightly exaggerated. But I did see a few which looked like they were worse than others. And they're in a little group. I'm just trying to find them now. It took a while to spot them last time. There you go. This one here. Down there. Down there. Down there. These all look darker in this whole group here. Those all look slightly darker on one end compared to the ones next to them. So that's what's making me suspicious. And they're all actually on the same track. Those all go together in parallel with each other. Um, yeah, it's not really pronounced. Though. Usually you see quite a pronounced darkening. I'm not really seeing that. It could be nothing. It could just be shadows in the in the um, pigment. It's just like they had a slightly darker there, but you probably can't really see. It. I can see a different. I can definitely see a difference between this one and that one, and even this one here and that one here looking slightly darker too. So I don't know if it's just the nature of these LEDs, or it may not even be the LEDs. It might be the driver. So there's the driver. It took up to this drives in this panel here, um, which. Had a screw. It's not the right screwdriver, but never So I did look at the driver when you hand it to me. I did pull that cover off and have a look at it. Capacitor is not bulged. It looks okay. I might as quickly test that. Choose the correct instrument. No, not that one. It has been powered up for quite some time, so it should be safe. Ninety-seven microfarad, 0.17 ohms ESR, which seems fine. I don't doubt that one. Um, capacitor is rated at what? One hundred microfarad. So yeah, that is probably fine. So let's look at the cables. Hmm. I think it could be interesting. Um, hmm. Don't want to cut that off. It looks like three millimeters. the right size. Yep, what's going on? There's not much fit on here but it's better than nothing. Some kind of earth is better than nothing. Might just put that cover back on again. So I'm flap around everywhere. Just a little bit so it doesn't fall around. 
Right, let's see what happens. Plug this in. I'm going to turn the voltage down and start low voltage. About 100 volts. Nothing. Wind it up. Nothing. 160, 200, now T30, T40, T30 volts there, and there is nothing going on. Well, that's a bit unexciting, isn't it? There's actually no current draw at all. So has that popped that fuse over there maybe? Well, it's a resistor, but it could be a fuse. Fuse resistor. Now I don't want to touch it because it's been powered. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, all right. So some power did get through, that's 8 volts on there. So it's definitely had something going on. Okay. Well, that just is okay. 3.4 ohms. There's a couple of resistors over here. Let's check those. 280k. Another one here. 395k. That's got three. So 434. Code that's got 304, I think it is. This one here, 7.4k. Can't quite read that number, I think it says 434. Um, but it's in parallel with other things, so it could easily be affecting it. So it looked like power did get through to the end. So maybe the LED string is now completely died. Maybe we'll measure the output power, eh? Um, just make sure it's not going to be dropping out and touching on something it shouldn't be. So you can measure here and here. That's got some silicon over it. It does. It's a mediocre kind of protection. So we'll measure here and here, I think, without touching anything else. And that should tell us if we've got anything. Drop the voltage back down again to 100 volts. Because it should still work down there. That in shot, yep, cool. Get 13, 14 volts on there, all right. It's one voltage up, it's doing 210 volts now, 30 volts, 32 volts, yep. So, and it's creeping upwards, which is the interesting part. I can see some LEDs starting to come on. I can see some coming on. These are not on. These are all on. Those are not. Starting to see something. Okay, great. So what I might do then, bearing in mind this is live, um, this lot here, through to uh, all those outer ones up to here are not working. And that one there, through to here, yeah, those aren't working. That one, through to that one, not working. And this slot here. So there's a lot of LEDs that aren't working. The interesting ones I'm suspicious about are working. I want a voltage up a bit more. See if we can get some more voltage out. Maybe they'll come on later on. So I'm doing 230 volts now. As I touch that, the brightness changed. That's interesting. 47 volts coming out. 
and these other LEDs definitely aren't coming on so that's very interesting so I think we do have some issues with shorts or something on these LEDs we measure across one nothing there there's no voltage drop across there at all so there must be a short we'll check this one as well oh see so that started lighting up then 2.4 volts and now it's lit up they've now come on let's measure this one no drop I'll touch that one and it started coming on yeah 2.4 volts now those are now on Okay, we've got these ones here as well. 0.3 volts drop across there. I get the same thing by touching them. No, doesn't seem like it. So it's interesting that some of these are coming on and off by touching them. It could be the dies are fractured or something. I don't know. It could be there's a a bit of an issue with solar whiskers underneath the parts. But now, a lot more of these are now on. These aren't on yet. That still shines a short. Let's just try flexing these, see if any of these come up. No. So, very interesting little faults. By pressing on these, it actually made something come right. So by doing that, did the voltage change? 53 volts, it's come up a little bit. Hmm, interesting. Turn the power off. Let it discharge. And then we'll turn the power back on again. It's taking a while to drop down. So when it came right down to, you know, less than 10 volts or something, then I'll power it back up again. Actually, close to it now. Power back up. Hasn't come straight back up. Forty-four volts. Starting to come up now. Forty-seven. When it gets to about forty-seven volts, I start seeing these LEDs come up. So those ones there, which were off before, have come back up. These ones still haven't. Right, interesting. So I think part of it is the driver. The driver does seem to be weak. But it could be because you've got shorter capacitors and that's slowing it down, and that's making it um, limit the current, so everything else is cutting off. Right, I don't know. Looks like there's a lot going on there. Should also be stored on the archive site. What archive site is that, Friday House? Didn't notice that come before. <laughs> One blowing up. I'm trying to blow up myself. <laughs> no, the um, obviously just LEDs not working on this light. Oh, I think I've got one of these. Yeah, I've actually. I think he scored that light from work because I have one here as well. Right, I've got one here which has got nothing in it. It's empty housing. It's just the housing. The whole, everything else is gone. So I, that is what was salvaged. Somebody else got there before me. But I was going to build a light for that to go above my desk here or on the wall maybe even and make an LED light so it's quite diffused. Hop the lighting on the desk. I won't get around to that. It's another project I haven't done yet. Yes. Mounting any of these strips inside? Yes, you could. Um, obviously, it's a constant current driver. Um, I could 
maybe find out what the current draw is. And I'm not going to sit there counting LEDs and figuring out how many LEDs are in series and how are in parallel and what its network is because that's just. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but it's also the, the driver is limiting the current there. But the description I had is that it comes on, it's kind of normally, and it was flickering. And obviously, that's not what we're seeing. But it's also got. Well, maybe the flickering was because of those LEDs when I was probing, they came on. So maybe that's what the flickering was, was those LEDs with thermals, maybe. Um, shorting and unshorting. Maybe there's. There could be solder whiskers behind the, the actual um, LEDs themselves. It could have bridged across the back of them, causing a short, maybe. I mean, by probing them was just enough to break them. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing. I mean, it could be the LEDs themselves, but I would have thought once it's shorted, it wouldn't unshort itself with an LED. It'd be that'd be it. No, not sure. Um. I just got asked to look at it, see if it's fixable. Basically, I wasn't said, "Hey, I'm going to fix it for you," or you know that. I just asked, "Hey, can you have a look at this and see if you can figure out what's going on with it and fix it if it's not a big deal?" Um, whereas it looks like the LED matrix is what's wrong. Uh, I'm not going there. I do actually have alternative LED panels. Like I've used them in the downlights, in the downlight repairs I've done. Like I've done the videos on those. I found some little LED discs that are about that big, right? And um, they just direct places basically, just wire them in and replace it, and off you go. So when you do get a problem, you just swap the thing out. Um, I've got a bunch of those. I mean, putting a bunch of those LED discs in there. Cracking a trace, yeah, possible, but they're quite wide traces. They're sort of that sort of width, right? And they're all in parallel with each other. So you think that if it's cracked, the whole string, string would go. Um, like everything before and after that point as well because it's obviously a whole serious parallel matrix going on there with, with the LED sets so obviously you've got a bunch in parallel which also then in series with other sets to get the voltage so I think 3 volts I'm getting say 60 volts there say 60 volts um, so it's going to be like 20 sets in series so if you've got a break in a track it would kill the whole lot you think um, or part of the set like part of that parallel array, maybe? I don't know. Um, that's my chat set to top chat again. Hi there. I don't like top chat. Why is it always default to top chat? I always set live chat. Because it hides things. Um, yeah. So, that's not. I've got even mastermind gloves on. Lewis Rossman gloves. I don't know. Um, problem with these, and your hands get sweaty. It's not very nice. So, am I going to go anything else with this? Apart from saying the LEDs are knackered, because obviously there is a problem with the LEDs. Hmm. Now there's some screws that go through to the casing. I wonder if it's maybe shorting out the traces in certain parts. Let's have a close look at that. So there's a, there's a screw here, screw there, screw there. They look like they're isolated, but because they look like it, it doesn't mean we should assume they are. And they should conduct to each other. There is. Alright, so that's fine. So the case, definitely earthly casing. But I've got screws up here as well. Yeah, it's connected, kind of. These ones just go to the housing in the back there. So it's got this link that goes across here. So link the two sets together. So if we go to the housing and check against the string where it was cutting out. Nothing there. Um, string over here. Nothing there. String over here. Nothing there. So 
it doesn't like it's an earthing problem that it's shorting out from these traces because there's actually a clearance around that screw. Like I said, there's a trace each side, but they you've got clearance here. So I don't think that's the problem. Um, these plates do move a little bit. They've not exactly got great heat sinking. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I know. I think it's just something interesting to look at. It's like, well, yeah, it's got a bunch of Macadoo D's. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, is there anything we can do to drive her? Don't think so. There's nothing we to see on the other side. So you've got a control chip over here. Obviously, the main switch mode inductor there. Main inductor here, for obviously, the switching. So this would be the step down, that would be that. This is the driver for the actual chip, to run the chip. Um, that also must be sensing current, so maybe if the current output is wrong, it won't be switching properly. Um, where's the current sensing? And that's there goes around to there, that inductor, to there, to that, Just trying to follow those wires around. So that's a common mode inductor, it's actually going through that, both windings, both connections going through that inductor, so they're common mode. Um, so I'm trying to see where the, the current sensing will be. Does go straight to the transformer. So this comes up to the capacitor negative, and this other pad here for this other capacitor, which isn't installed. I guess they use this board on different models. Um, which then comes down to this side through these capacitors and to the other side over here. I'm not seeing where the current sensing is. There is a resistor, R6 I think it is, just here, which goes towards that chip. Maybe that's part of it. There's no crack traces either. Crack solder joints, I think so. So yeah, I don't see what's really going on there. I mean, it could be a bad resistor, which is not current sensing properly. There's no particularly big resistors on there for me to think that's a current sense resistor. Um, they're quite large values, they're not small values like you expect for current sense. So I'm not sure how it's actually doing constant current because there's no real things in there to do that. Um, what's that under there actually? What's that underneath the edge of the transformer? Is that a diode? I think it's a diode. Yes, yeah, a diode just underneath the edge of the transformer over there. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't see why that would be giving it a weak output. I mean, the capacitor tested okay. These capacitors don't fail. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think it's purely the LEDs and it's overloading it because it's shorting out. I think that must be what it is. But normally what you get then is you get the other any of these are kind of brighter instead. So I don't know. Yeah, they're probably having baked. Yeah, I don't like these LED like fixtures. I mean I like, I just don't like them, you know. They overdrive the LEDs and they die. You know, the last you know, a couple of years, oh no, my light's broken, I have to go and throw it away and buy a new one. How good is that for the manufacturers? Oh look, we can sell you another one instead of dropping a current down by 10% and having it last 10 years. Hmm. Don't get as many sales that way, do they? I think it's extremely wasteful. LEDs are supposed to be better, and in theory they are better. You know, they are supposed to last better than incandescent lights and be more efficient and everything. Which is true, if you drive them correctly. But all the 
can't say all the manufacturers are overdriving UDDs, kills them really quickly, and then get they get to sell you some more. <laughs> it's like it's, it's intentionally designed to blow up. I don't like them at all, you know. If I'm doing something with LEDs, I always dial the current back, you know. You know sure, you say, oh, you can run your LED at 20 milliamps. Sure, I'll run it at 10 or 15 milliamps because you know, it'll be much better for the LED and the brightness doesn't suffer that much. Anyway, um, yeah. So I think I might just take this apart and give that to say, nah, it's pretty fat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I reckon anyway. We shall see, I suppose. But, um, it's a shame, it's almost working. I mean, the driver does seem to be working, but um, yeah. I think the LEDs are maybe overloading the current because the thing is, when you get LEDs that die, when they're in these serious chains, what happens is the other ones will usually get brighter because the current will be amplified, I suppose, per LED section. Because it's got a fixed current, it might be 100 milliamps, whatever it may be, I don't know. Um, and then they'll be going across the whole chain. But when you've got some shorts, it effectively gives you more voltage, so it may increase the brightness of the others. Depends how it's designed. Sometimes they're voltage based, usually they're current based, but current based shouldn't really matter. But if they're not designed right, then um, if it's just a fixed voltage output, then the voltage is spread across the other ones which aren't shorted out, then the voltage effectively is increased for those which increases the current and then blows the rest out quicker. Yeah, well, that's the thing, oh, so can't fix it inside of the EDs. And the other problem is it's an aluminium plate, right? So aluminium PCB. Not exactly the easiest thing to work on. Um, it's just not worth it, really. Um, it's a shame. I mean, the other way of fixing it would be to rewire it and make it a low voltage system instead. You know, find the tracks, find actually follow it around, figure out what the voltage will be for that section, and maybe isolate them. And make a whole bunch of parallel pairs to try at a lower voltage, maybe. You know, maybe run at 12 volts or something, the whole lot, make it a 12 volt light instead. And then that way the ones which are blown don't matter because you can just leave those ones out of the equation. Might be an option, make a low voltage light. But that's a lot of messing around, it's not probably not worth it. And they'll probably blow anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's just package this thing back up again, get rid of it. I mean, yes, it probably has got some way of fixing it, but it's just not worth it. And unfortunately, you know, that's the way it is these days. Things are designed to either be not be fixable or not economic to fix them. When I mean, if they designed it properly in the first place, you wouldn't need to fix it at all. And that's what annoys me. You know, you shouldn't have to deal with this. Anyway, here's what it is. So until the guy, I looked at it, it doesn't work. <laughs> Even I can't fix that. Well, I can, but I'm not going to bother. <laughs> okay. Scungy gloves off. These are not gloves today. Okay. That's a little job done. It's been sitting there for 
Well, about a month, won't even look at it. Anyway, now I've looked at it. I'm still thirsty. Right. Okay, so I've got to... So I think we've got else... Well, let's turn my sentence together again. Well, I think about what else I need to do today. Because I've also got this video series I need to make. I need to make some videos for that. Um, what's the next one was going to be? Integrated Circus, wasn't it? I've basically found out what I want to do. So I don't miss anything, but... There may be things I need to add in yet. So integrated circuits supposed to be the next one I'm gonna record. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it yet. <laughs> I just basically thought, oh I could do one about that and then I made it a, a folder and said look I'll do one about this. This sort of thought about things I should probably cover. Um there's probably things which I haven't mentioned or thought of which should be included in the video series, so um, I've had some suggestions, I haven't made note of those yet, but I've seen some video suggestions. Some of those things I've already actually thought of. So I need to look at that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, I've been talking a lot today, it's going to be a bit hard to talk a lot more. Phone's getting sore from all the talking. So, so I need to wash my hands first. Okay. I'll be right back. I've got food to eat. So I'm going to pick your brains about things I should maybe be including. So what things do you think I should be adding for beginner series, right? So beginner focused. So what beginners might want to see, what they need to learn about. That's what my current focus is. So what suggestions do you have for things I should probably do videos about? I should put the current list up here for you to see again, in case you didn't see it before. Uh, that's the right one. This one. And you see it's small, I can't do much about that, I'm afraid. So, what should I cover? Um, so integrated circuits, open clutter outputs, because I thought that's relevant to integrated circuits, and understanding a source versus sink situation. What do you think? Yeah. Do you like it? Yes, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like this cough I told you about. No. So uh, linear voltage regulators, linear power supplies, AC versus DC. I'm not sure. I might have to move that one up in the list actually. Made that one sooner. Uh, maybe before the linear power supplies section, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, actually, no. I think it's alright there. Think about it. Um, noise filtering and smoothing, which is you know, basically filtering in a way. Op amps. Ohm's Law, which I, I think maybe I should have done that a little bit earlier, but I don't know. I overwhelm people with maths, but I, this is going to be simple. I don't do complex maths. You know. Series and parallel circuits. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Series 
two as a paddle. Um, okay, anything else? Um, so I've already done eight videos, which obviously aren't listed here. Um, I mean, like the voltage references one, I'm not even sure I'm going to do that. I might take that back out. I'm not sure that's overly relevant for newbies. I mean, the references are used in lots of things in some way, but I don't know. Does that need to be there? Don't know. Batteries. I suppose you're thinking about like lithium cells and maximum voltages, minimum voltages, protected circuits. Is that the sort of thing you're thinking of? Hmm. Yeah, let's try to think of everything which a newbie would need to know to start tinkering with electronics and maybe learning about how to build things, the basic circuits, you know, like LED flashes and stuff like that. You know, the sort of beginner stuff, or maybe though these days beginners are sort of going to microcontrollers, aren't they? So I've got microcontrollers on here, but I'm not sure how much I'm going to delve into that. kinds of batteries um, yeah yeah no worries um, yeah I don't know I can't really comment about things I've played with myself in a way because I mean I'm not an, a university educated person <laughs> so I'm self-taught well, there's lots of things which I haven't done I know about things I've played around with so, um, I can't really comment about batteries I've used, which is probably, I mean, NICADs, nickel metal hydride, lithium, alkaline. I mean, that's most of them, anyway, isn't it? Hmm. I think for batteries it'd be more like protection circuitry and knowing about that stuff. You kind of hook up a battery and not have it protected in case you over-voltage it and something like that. So I think I will cover it, but with probably lithium cells in mind. So you don't want people blowing themselves up or setting fires at their houses because they're using batteries wrong, eh? Um, so I think I will cover it in some form. So battery protection and charging, how does that sound? Okay, what else can you guys think of? Yeah, the more things the better. And ideally, things that I can do in less than five minutes. Although so far, I haven't had much luck with that. I can probably cover that under the battery protection thing, so, um, I mean, imbalance, I suppose I can mention imbalance, charging and imbalance, maybe, that way it's in my mind, because that is an important aspect, I mean, if you're using lithium cells and you've got an imbalance, um, I mean, that's what the protection circuit is supposed to do, is balance 
if you've got a decent one. A lot of cheaper ones don't do it. In fact, I can also cover that for basic batteries as well, like alkalines. Hmm. So if I did alkaline batteries as well, just generic alkaline batteries, when you're using batteries and things, I could also mention about the imbalance CSP issue. So you've got one battery which is 50% discharged, and you've got another battery that's brand new. How the 50% discharged one actually end up reversing your voltage? <laughs> um, things like that. How to use multimeter? Yep, I've already got it on the list for the um, more advanced stuff. I think... Did I have any other... I have any other one. I've got a list somewhere. I did have that noted down somewhere, although I don't have it in here. What happened to that? I thought I did have it in here, actually. That's a good point. 27, using multimeter. I can spit it. There you go, using a multimeter, that's in there now. I think I did have that noted somewhere. But it should be definitely be in this list here, definitely. So are there any other Hey Dan, how's it going? Um So are there any other jelly bean kind of parts which people use, which I don't have listed or I haven't used yet? Is there anything I've missed? So Dan, what we're talking about right now is the Electronics basic series I started doing. <laughs> I wouldn't be a friend anyway. I get people. I get people call me the wrong name all the time. Don't worry about it. Um, so what I'm talking about is the fact I started doing electronics basic series, right? So electronics for beginners. I've done a couple of videos published already, and I've got all the eight lined up. I've got to record a bunch more yet. The plan is to do a video every single day. Um, it's an experiment. So it's a YouTube experiment. But the idea is to try and cover up things which newbies into electronics will want to know and what sorts of equipment they'd need or what parts they'd be using. And I'm starting off with the really basic stuff and gradually building it up. So I'm just trying to look at what things I may have um, may have used in order to... Um, or what things I may have missed compared to what I've actually used here. So, is there anything which you can think of which I haven't included? Let me know. Mr. Handsome, me, and I think so. I think my female viewer should be better if I was better looking. <laughs> I think I've got about 5%. Actually, that's the point. I know it's YouTube stats, of don't show any female viewers anymore. It's weird. So what's on screen right now, if you can see it, are the videos I'm yet to make. Let me find your list of ones I've already done. So the ones I've already done, down the bottom here, which hopefully you can see. I know it will be small. So I've done, obviously, the intro, resistors, capacitors, inductors, transformers, diodes and diode bridges, or bridge rectifiers, LEDs, and transistors are the ones I've already recorded and put up on my YouTube in the playlist, which only the first and second video are currently publicly available, well, published. The other ones are unlisted, but they can be seen if you go into the playlist. It's not really hidden that well. Um... And then obviously the top list of the ones which I have in mind already to, to record. 
this is just about teaching electronics and just giving an intro to it, I suppose, and getting people started into it a little bit. The I want to do a second series about repairs, specifically around learning how to repair things. So um, that one I'll do after this. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go with this, but I basically want to try and get at least a month's worth of videos. So I want to do every a daily video for at least a month, probably six weeks if I can. Maybe longer, depends how long we go. But with this, with this lot alone, is over a month's worth when you factor in my mailbag and repair videos, which also have to fit, uh, slot into these. So I've already got over a month's worth planned, which is good. And plus, on top of that, I want to do the repair video series, which is going to be harder to do because I need to give examples in that one. So that might be a longer time frame thing rather than a daily. It might be, you know, a few a week, maybe, if I'm lucky. I have to see. So your how to use multimeter video is underperforming, really. That's a shame. Um, I haven't actually looked up what the stats are for that one. Oh, cheap, medium, and expensive, yeah. Yeah, the, I've kind of tried to do that a little bit with the reviews, like the, the multimedia reviews I've been doing. I've kind of tried to keep like budget ones and I'm trying to keep budget ones if I can. I've also got, obviously got the flukes there which is the more high end ones but then I've got the budget end of the fluke range so it's like in the middle. I've tried to split that across in the review side at least but people love to be told what I should buy. Yeah or essential gear yeah. So test gear is something I do have in my notes of things to buy I like recommended equipment sort of thing. I don't have it in that list though. That's another thing I've made notes about. What am to there? Oh, it is. I've got a I've got a text file with daily video information. There we go. So this is what I had been making as notes. All right. So electronics for beginners and various things which I thought of. Then electronic tools for beginners. Which covers equipment, and then electronics repair, which covers you know repair processes and troubleshooting and diagnostics and stuff like that. Um, so I do have a note about doing something about equipment, you know, power supplies and multimeters and what have you, and hand tools. So I do intend to do that, but I haven't looked into this one in too much detail yet. Um, then I'm looking at maybe doing some projects where you build your own things, maybe, or explaining how to do it. A bit of monk controllers. I'm not sure what to do about this bit yet. I've got no experience with STM32s or picks, <laughs> so, but I probably would mention them or something as op alternatives. Um, and this is, you know, design your own PCB. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I could certainly cover that. Uh, do I do much programming? Yeah, I do Arduino stuff. Um, that's, you know, it. As far as microcontrollers go, that's what I do. Arduino, like the Atmega series and the uh, ESP32s, A266s. But it's all done in the Arduino IDE. That's what I use. Um, Apart from that, I'll do other software stuff, but that's not really what I want to cover. Uh, yeah, so that's my notes of things I should be planning videos about. So I've got lots of things. Anything I thought of, I basically chucked it in here, you know. Um, even stuff I probably haven't really thought about in depth or just sort of chat it on anything. Oh, I'll think about it more later on and I'll get read a comment now and go, what was I thinking of? <laughs> you know? Uh, anyway. So I've got lots of things in mind. I just need to structure it and um, try not to miss anything which people might need to know. But yeah, mains voltage safety, definitely, yeah. I've got safety in there is my notes for the um, repair series, for doing the repair side. 
I mean, I thought newbies to electronics shouldn't be working on mains gear anyway, really. So I haven't covered mains as such, but I probably will cover it when I go up to like switch my power supplies and um, stuff like that. I do have it there. Um, linear power supplies, AC versus DC. Probably AC versus DC is when I start looking at the safety side of it, I suppose, and mentioning about high voltage a bit more. Um, linear power supplies isn't necessarily high voltage conversion. It could be stepping from 8 volts down to 5 volts kind of thing. That's why I was thinking of that one, along with voltage regulators. You know, sort of hand in hand. I don't know if I'm going to merge those into one video yet. I'm not sure. But, but safety is definitely something I need to cover, definitely. Actually, Dan, I'll say do the opposite. What I actually recommend you do is try and do similar things to me at the same time. Because what will happen is it gives our audiences, which will, which will be some overlapping between our audiences, um, it will help push both of our video sets. So if we're both doing a basic series of some kind, it might actually help boost both sets of series so um, rather than thinking oh you're gonna trample on each other it doesn't actually work that way it, it works the other way so if you actually both do the similar sort of thing people watch one video and they want a different perspective so then go and watch the other video and then it sees both videos getting more views so um, it actually does the opposite of what you think it would do so actually if anything um, I suggest making some yourself and it doesn't have to be the same stuff I'm covering obviously you know whatever you want to do but um, if there's any overlap it's it's not a problem go for it plus it'll be different perspective I can't say it'll be different perspectives so what I might say about something maybe if it's the same subject even your perspective on it will be different to mine and we might say different things about it and different aspects um, and we might cover the same thing with different angles which gives a fuller picture you know so there's no harm in duplicating if anything it's a good thing Um, yeah. Now it's actually beneficial if you, like, if you think about how YouTube works in, um, like, popular topics, right? You get a popular topic. So if you get lots of people making the same kind of video on the same topic, that topic is deemed to be more important because other people are doing that same topic, right? And so they'll get more exposure to get recommended more because YouTube's algorithms think, oh, that's a popular topic, so therefore we should promote that more. Although it's only a couple of channels, it still has a, some slight effect. So... Serial communications. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. I have to think about how I do that one. Because there's so many different kinds of communications. But then for hobbyists trying to build things, you got I squared C, um, you know, and SPI and what have you, and those are serial communication protocols, so knowing how to use them would be beneficial. Yeah, I'm not an expert on serial communication stuff either. I mean, I've used it, I've done a bit of it, and I get things to work with it, but I'm certainly no expert in it. Um, but I can certainly cover enough to make it be okay for beginners. Hmm. Okay. Um... Let me think about this. So I need to do... Because that's a bit more advanced. I also need to think about... Do we need to use an oscilloscope when you're doing serial communications stuff? Usually no, but sometimes you need to know what's going on. So you need to better read it with an oscilloscope to say, hey, this is what's going on in the data. Maybe not an oscilloscope, it could be even a logic analyzer. 
Um, that's getting towards the more advanced end of things, but you don't necessarily need to probe the system to use it. So maybe I should do like a debugging of serial systems, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, 28 will be serial communications. I squared C. Uh, SPI OS232. There you go. Basics. There you go. How's that? I think I think the debugging part should be more of the repair side of it. You reckon? Um, repairs. Um, functional testing, debugging. I'm gonna make this a note anyway. Debugging serial serial comms. There we go. Saved as a note to look at that later. Why are you using accent is way sexy? I don't think my voice is sexy at all. <laughs> I mumble too much. And talk too fast. And besides mine's a mashup between English and New Zealand anyway. And it's not even good English, it's, you know, London English. Mm. Why gauges? Uh, why losses and why resistances? Oh. I haven't thought about it, no. I didn't, I didn't consider that at all. The Ohm's Law one's basically be, be looking at the ways of using Ohm's Law and how to do calculations with only remembering the simple Ohm's Law triangle and the power triangle as well, right, same thing. And how to use just those two things, memorize those, and you can do a lot of stuff relatively easily, sometimes in a more convoluted way, but um, without doing this complicated maths that happen sometimes with things. Um, because that you should know what size of wire to use, yeah. Okay. So I could do something with that, I suppose. Okay, wire gauges. Uh, what should I call that? 29. Um, what wire to use? What's the right wire size? Um, yeah, I've got to think about it. Hmm. I mean, this what wire size one could be a really short video. That could be pretty quick, actually. I mean, I could literally just stick a chart on the, on the screen and say, here you go. <laughs> and maybe explain a bit about why. That would probably do it. Yeah, I don't think my speeches are good though. I think I talk too fast and mumble a bit too much. I don't have good pronunciation. What's the word for it? There's a word for it. Enunciation. Enunciation. Uh, that's the way I've always been. I'm actually better than I used to be. It used to be really hard to understand. Anyway, I've always had speech issues. Um. 
think that's why I talk so fast actually, because I'm trying to get rid of it quickly. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so what else? That's quite a few more videos. That's, that's good. So we'll set um, five more we've added on. Excellent. So I think about componentry, right? So what sorts of components can people use, which I don't already have covered? Or the other thing I've done is I've, like the very early videos, especially, I think I'm getting better as I'm recording more of these beginner videos. I started off quite quickly. I actually recorded six videos in a period of two hours um, when I first started off, right? So I was being very much a helicopter view of these things. So the um, understand what a resistor is, I kept it very basic and I probably kept it a bit too basic from the comments I was getting I think I probably didn't actually go deep enough into it so some of the later videos have gone a bit deeper um, so resistor I might actually revisit that and go into more detail um, I basically said resistor limits current and voltage to a point I mentioned about a voltage divider aspect which is kind of true but not always, depends on what you're doing um, Uh, no soldering videos. No oh, soldering. Well, if you're strapping components together side by side in parallel, you should always put some kind of matching network on them, which is usually just a small resistor, very small value resistor. You know, a one ohm or half an ohm or something like that just to give it a chance to balance, because otherwise they could be fighting each other a little bit. You see, if you, if you see a bit of equipment, like commercial equipment, like um, inverters, stuff like that, if you look at the, these parallel MOSFETs they've got in them, you'll see they've got resistors on them to help them to balance themselves. This stuff's even them all out, because no, no transistors or MOSFETs are exactly matched. They're never perfectly matched, that's why they put the resistors on so they don't end up having problems. Biasing a transistor. I've covered transistors but I didn't mention biasing at all. I just use them, I think the concepts I basically put in it was running as a switch. Transistors and switches is basically the way I approached it. I didn't really even go into um, using them as variable outputs, I basically did it as biasing resistor. You mean, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, you still got to think about saying no. Um, the um, what was I saying? Oh yes, so the transistors, I basically used them as switches in the example I gave. I didn't really go into the aspect of using them as a variable output, like an amplifier for the like AC and stuff like that, for audio search systems. So, you know, the fact it's either on or off isn't really right for that situation, obviously. So I didn't actually cover biasing of transistors or using them as an amplifier. I didn't actually even mention that, really. I think I touched on it very slightly towards the end. As it occurred to me that hey, I should be mentioning something about this, but that's about it. Um, so I may even do like a follow up to the resistors and transistors to cover more detail in those ones. So transistors and amplifiers, maybe. Um, transistors and amplifiers, let's do this. Um, as amplifiers and biasing because that's part of that Um, like you put the resistors on the source across the source well so, so the source feed 
like the common rail which is going into the tra into the MOSFET. You put the, the resistors on that side. I think it was on the salt side anyway. I haven't really used MOSFET that much myself, to be honest. I've not really gone there. It's not something I needed to do, so I don't have a lot of experience with it. I know a little bit about it. And this is something I've seen and I've read about a little bit is that you put resistors in there to help them to balance themselves out. Otherwise, you can have two MOSFETs fighting each other. No, it could happen. Um, it was a good video I saw on that actually. What was that? Someone talked about it. Um, Guy with glasses, he not made any videos for a while. He used to do lots of projects and he just drops off the face of the earth. He'd build these projects so he could follow along and actually publish some. Um, what's his name? Can't think of it, but he covered it in one of his videos, one of his later videos, it actually was. He was doing something, building a power supply or something, I think it was. And he had MOSFETs in there and he had to do it on that because of he's getting some issues with the MOSFETs fighting each other. You were planning for double and tripling up MOSFETs, yeah. So, Skullcom, that's the one. Good good one, David. That's exactly right, Skullcom. So, um, yeah. Um, so, you mentioned that in one of his videos where he had, I think it was two MOSFETs he had in there, and he had to put resistors on them because they were fighting each other. And it's causing excess heat and stuff like that because they, they were, you know, one was trying to load it up, one was trying to put it down. And it's, yeah. It's causing an imbalance. They work better. I think, I'm think i not sure the side of the resistor was on. It was on the source or the drain. It's either on the source or the drain. It may not even matter which side you put it on. But it just needs to make sure that they've both got it in parallel. So you got the MOSFETs with the resistor and then you got the, the junction between them. So join off your main output from that. So if one's pulling or pushing a bit more then it doesn't actually cause a fight between them. It causes runaways and stuff like that. Maybe on a gate as well, actually, but the gate might matter too. I'm not sure. I don't think it does. Probably no harm for it just on a gate as well. But like I said, I haven't used MOSFETs that much at all. Very little, in fact. Um, okay. Um, Alright, what else can we do? Now I'm also trying to cover things that I have experience with, and not, you know, not things which are foreign to me. There's lots of stuff which I could potentially do videos about, which I don't have any experience with, so I can't really talk about them with any real authority or real knowledge. You know, I have to learn it myself first. So it's things like that I try to be a bit careful of as well. Um, transistors and amplifiers, I've used that a little bit, obviously from my own repair experience as well. Um, Biasing transistors, that's pretty straightforward. So that's easy enough to explain, but yeah, there's, there's other things like MOSFETs which I don't have a lot of experience with, so I have to be careful about not choosing a subject I don't know much about. Although I don't mind stressing myself a bit and actually trying to learn more about these things, but I don't want to be trying to teach other people if I don't know it myself, you know. Um, and also, my, obviously, my repair series is based on the fact I'm self taught. So it's based about my very much layman's terms of things, you know, on this university educated electronics engineer stuff. Because that's not me. Um right. I think we've got just about everything covered really. I don't really know there's much else there which would be a gap. Oh, my tools. Well, yeah, kind of. There's, I've got lots of equipment here, and a lot of it I probably know, only know a fraction of the functions, to be honest. I mean, there's lots of stuff here um, where I may not, like all these oscilloscopes, for example, you know, they've got lots of features on them and lots of things they can do. I barely know them. 
you know, I only know the stuff which I generally use. If I come across a situation where I need to know how to do a certain feature, then I figure it out. But um, yeah, it's only really the common stuff. You know, I don't do anything that complex on them really. Um, yeah, and a lot of these things like I've got this test gear by me. It's like this calibration stuff and what have you. Um, you know, those are relatively basic functions like the but this HP multimeter up here the eight was hell was that thing three four five seven a um, that's got heaps of functions built into menu system and all the things it can do I've got no idea what I do <laughs> no idea never used them so it's probably lots of things which I could be doing with it um, and I don't have a clue so yeah so I've got lots of gaps and things I just don't know because I've not been trained. You know, I have to figure these things out as I go. When a situation arrives, I figure it out if I know that hey, I should be able to do this, or I come across a video of somebody else doing that. I think ah, okay, and I learn a bit from that. Jelly bean parts. I do have a note about jelly bean parts in my daily videos notes. Common jelly bean parts to have. Um, now things to keep in stock. Um, I don't actually have a list of parts, so I've got a note to make a list. But I haven't got a list. <laughs> yeah, be things like four one four eight diodes, uh, NM three one sevens, SI uh, seven out of fives regulators, uh, three point three volt regulators, and obviously an array of resistors and capacitors and. And data and like these parts books you get. Like I've shown these parts books several times, and you know those are really handy things to have. I mean, the quality of those parts you don't know what you're getting from those Japanese, Japanese, Chinese parts books. Um, but you have a selection, and you can get them really cheaply for a, a range of things, and you may not need to use that many. Um, things like that are handy to have. Those are probably the things I'll put in there. Um, make common switches like toggle switches. For doing DIY making stuff you know toggle switches always come in handy rotary switches displays LCD displays like 2x16 displays things like that um, OLED displays um, microcontrollers like the ESP32 is one of my go-to things I can consider that a jelly bean part um, Arduino Pro Minis is the other one I have a jelly bean part for microcontrollers um, yeah capacitors like full range capacitors you know everyone needs capacitors even you're building stuff from scratch, you need capacitors. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's probably be quite easy to compile a list and actually make something, but I haven't actually put much thought into it yet. Oh yeah, okay, no worries though. Oh yeah. Yeah, I haven't really thought too much about it. I mean, there's some like, service mount parts which I may mention. Like, uh, there's a 7805 regulator, which is a jelly bean kind of part, I suppose, which is service mount. It's a. Uh, what the hell is that footprint called? 252, is it? Something like that? D pack? D pack. Um, um, so that's service mount, but it's a 7805, you know, or 7808, whatever you want. But I've got a bunch of those. I've used those in some projects as well. Uh, MMBT 3904, 3906, which is the service mount version of the 2N 3904 and 3906, which are also very common parts. I've got those. Um, various diodes, you know, power diodes, Zener diodes. Um, yeah. Also, those sorts of things. I mean, it depends what you're doing, though. If you're doing making and you're trying to build things or construct things you want a selection of parts so you can choose the thing that's available to you um, maybe designing things then maybe but then same thing goes if you're repairing things you need to have a selection of parts so when it comes up you've got the part there instead of having to wait three months for it to turn up you know uh, that's part of it too okay so Yes, I do. I need to do a video about jelly bean parts to have. I did have that noted in my list. 
I think I should add a video for that. GB parts to keep in stock. How's that? I think that covers it. Then I can just be inventive as I need to there. Um, yeah. Buying resistors in thousands. Was that rolls of resistors, service mount resistors? I mean, that's a cheap way of buying them. <laughs> I've actually got a box. Um, I purchased some, I don't know, I think some electronics retailer shut down or something over here. And I had a whole bunch of surplus stuff on the auction site. And I purchased boxes of stuff. I did show them in videos at the time. And I've got, actually got a box. Oh, nice little bin, like this sort of size. And that is just full of rolls of service mount parts. I think it's mostly resistors. I think there's some capacitors in there too. But it's just random values. I don't even know what's there, to be honest, offhand. I, but I've got rolls of thousands, whatever there may be. I don't know any what. I was on a roll. Maybe it's 10,000 a roll, I've no idea. But um, yeah, I've got some rolls of those, but they're sitting out in the other lab in a box. I don't even look at them. You know, like if there's service mount parts I need, I've got the sample books and I'll just pull them out of the sample book. And if I need to restock it, I'll buy some to restock the sample book and put it to one side. Um, yeah. So I think the role is only really helpful if you're making a lot of stuff, like you're doing like productions, like somebody's got um, a bit loony, you may do some, I think. Um, oh God, why am I having blanks? Brian Locke, he does that. You need them for that. Um, also, unexpected Maker, he's also doing a lot of that himself now, making making his own stuff. A few other people like that, which actually do a bit of manufacturing from home. Um, Dustin Watts, is the other one I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, my viewers have spoken about use of S and D parts. Yeah, I mean, in this video series I'm doing, I'm looking at, I'm focusing a lot on through hole parts, right? Although it's very old school, it's also very accessible, right? So you don't have to be good at soldering to be able to handle doing through hole parts. So for a beginner's perspective, through hole parts and this old school stuff is a good place to start. But people also need to know about the service mount and that that's the current thing, you know. So I've tried to cover both in a lot of videos I've done. I've actually shown service mount parts and through hole um, to try and show that, hey, this is also through hole and service mount parts, same thing, much different sizes. Um, yeah, and get for breadboarding as well. So if you're trying to design something breadboarding, I do actually have something about breadboarding in my notes here about breadboarding and um, that's going to be under the making a PCB section I was going to send there. So you breadboard up a circuit and then design a PCB from that. I was, that's going to be quite an involved video, I think. We'll see how that one goes. But I haven't got there yet. I haven't really thought about that one yet. But that's what I've got noted down as breadboarding. Um, so, yeah, through hole is definitely a best starting point. Although it is old school. Um, it's. It is getting harder and harder to find the through hole parts, like even um, ICs and stuff are gradually getting phased out and replaced with, you know, SOT 23s or. Uh, um, SO16s and you know, SOIC packages and stuff like that. So they are getting phased out and changed to service mount. So they are getting harder and harder to find. So, you know, it's going to eventually force everyone to start off with SND, which is not a great starting point. You know, trying to learn how to solder on SMD parts, not so easy. Um, do I need to do a video about soldering? Possibly. Um, I mean, how to solder? I suppose I could do a video about that, but then what 
is really to say use flux get good solder um, have a decent iron which you can put enough heat don't buy cheap Chinese crap which is absolutely rubbish um, I mean the cheap Chinese crap not the moderate Chinese crap <laughs> Yeah, solder paste is, um, I've used paste, I haven't used it much. The thing with paste is that it's a bit messier and it's a bit more specialised in that you need to have a stencil to put it on, ideally, you don't really have to but you can do it without it. Um, and you have to look after the paste. Paste doesn't sit there for a year or two unused. Doesn't like that. You know, you have to use it. It's got a use-by date, and it does actually go off. Whereas a roll of solder will sit there for twenty years, and you can still use it. Um, yeah. So solder paste is probably more of a if you're designing PCBs and making your own PCBs, then you'd be looking at solder paste. Hobbyists getting into it probably not. It probably too soon for that. Um, oh yeah, using paste and solving some DODs. Yeah. So paste can be quicker to use. You know, if you've got an SMD circuit and you you've got a hot plate to put it on, you know you can. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can use hot air as well, but it tends to blow the parts around. So a hot plate is better, you put it on a hot plate and then place the parts on the paste, the paste will hold them in place and if you're lucky they won't tombstone on you and um, or spin sideways or something, you have to make sure the parts actually solder nicely but in some ways it can be much quicker to do depending on any parts on the board and stuff like that but it's got its pros and cons but certainly it's a lot harder for newbies to get into it using three year old paste, you're pretty lucky then, your paste is three years old and still working um, I've had paste go off after six months. I've had to buy paste a few times, and each time I'm going to use it, it's like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's rock hard now. That's the internet then. You know? Um, yeah. I mean, the recommendation is to keep paste in the fridge. And, well, I don't do that. So, maybe he's got the right paste. Maybe the paste I've been buying is too rubbish. I've been buying the cheap paste from China. I could be guilty of that, actually. It could be what's wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's toothpaste. Hell no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's lots of things I can cover, definitely. Um, soldering, I think, should be in there. How to solder. I might take out voltage references and put in how to solder. I mean, I don't know, voltage references, I think people still need to know about because it's a reference to power supplies. Hmm. I shall edit on the end. And I may move it around. I might move it up further. further. I'll see how it goes. Iron paste. Um, hot air, hot plate. Yeah, I think I cover it. That just prompts for me to think about it. Yeah, okay. So, with 32 videos there so far. I'm sure I'll think of more as well as we go along. Um, with the videos I normally do, so it's 32 days, I'd normally do 8 videos at least, maybe 10 videos a month. So that's 42 videos, that's one and a half months worth of footage on a daily video. Cool. Do I have inductive spikes anywhere? Inductive spikes, what do you mean? Oh, 
Oh, but Tetsu microcontroller pins, are right. Um, like EMF protection. Yeah. Um, I mean, with relays, it's like, well, you know, if we put a relay in, you put a diode in, <laughs> you know, to protect it. Motors, I've got no experience of doing motors. I don't have no, I don't have no, I don't have any experience with motor controller stuff, kind of that. I mean, yeah. Um, did I have something there? What was I thinking of? Relays and the read switches. I was going to cover EMF in that, so I add that as, a, as a relays um, and EMF. There you go. As a reminder to make sure I do EMF. Basic fault finding. Yeah, I'll be doing that as a separate series. So this is um, just a video series looking at for teaching people a bit about electronics and the basics to get them into it. And I'll be doing a separate video series on tools and equipment to have. I'll do another video series on learning how to repair. So it's basically going more mainstream and getting less mainstream as it goes along. So people want to learn about electronics, aren't necessarily trying to fix things, they're just learning how to make things and be cool about you know create extracting these things because they've got this idea they want to do and I just don't know how to do it. Um, so I'm trying to do more mainstream first, which affects which has the most benefit to people. Hopefully, I suppose you could say, and hopefully pushes my channel the most, um, and then more and more focused after that. So obviously, what equipment you need, because that's also fairly mainstream. What equipment you need to use, how to use it, and then I'll be doing the repair stuff, which is much more specialist, a bit more of a niche, you know, which is a much narrow field of people into electronics that actually don't want to repair. So, um, so I do have it all in mind. I, I've got three months off with no weekend work. So I'm hoping to get in this three months a load of videos done and try and basically just my intention is to do a video every day until I run out of content or run out of steam. I'm not sure which one's gonna be. <laughs> um so that's the plan and I just want to keep on going as long as I can and get as much out as I can in that three months. I've actually booked in leave as well from work, so I've actually got uh I've actually got tomorrow off work. I'm not working tomorrow, so give me some more time to get some more videos done. I don't have enough of a headway yet. I'm only eight days ahead with my videos right now, as far as what's recorded. I want to have more than that because I want to do a big system. So if I get held up with something, I'll get busy or I'll get tired. I want to have enough of a buffer there so it's not going to hinder the output and I can still get the video every day thing done. Um, so I've got tomorrow off to do videos tomorrow, and I've got also booked up a week in a couple of weeks time a few weeks time I think it was like maybe a month's time I put a week off so I'm actually going to take a whole week off work as well and um, I'm going to sit down and try and crack out a whole bunch of videos in that too that's the plan but I know that's around the time I expect to be doing the repair video side of it and those will be more intensive more involved and there will be longer videos and it's going to take a lot more input and a lot more effort to create them whereas the beginner series pretty much off the cuff I'll sit down at a desk and talk and try and explain things that are in my head at the time and then when I'm in editing I go oh I should have mentioned that and then I'll put some overlays on the or you know pictures to go over the top to support what I'm saying that sort of stuff so but that's the plan anyway it's it's pretty good so I've got enough I think I've got nine days of video done yeah I've got nine days worth waiting to go um, which I already uploaded to YouTube I'll just have to publish them each day so I just want a bigger buffer now. I want like two weeks buffer, really. So if the worst case, if I get a video done every couple of days, I won't get back too far, you know. Because I'm still working full time on top of this. Uh, right. Okay, so I think we've done this to death, really. Um, what I'll probably do is once I start looking at the other stuff, like the, the test equipment, how to use gear and that sort of stuff, um, what equipment to buy in a more focused um, video series. I'll probably talk about this again in the live stream and we'll discuss what options there are there as well and 
see what you guys come up with compared to what I've already thought of and see what, if there's anything there which I've missed. Um, and the same for the one I did with a prepare video series as well. I've got ideas about what I want to cover there, but it's probably things I also haven't thought of for things which might be um, helpful to people. You know, I do tend to forget what people don't know. All right, so it's not that I'm assuming people know it. I'm, I'm forgetting that they don't know. It. It's not the same thing. My wife says I forget people. My wife says I'm a terrible teacher. Right, she says I, I assume people know things. I I don't disagree with that. What I I think it's slightly different to that. What I do is I forget people don't know something. I don't assume they do know it. I forget they don't know it. It's a subtle difference there. Um, so that's what I'm also got to try and keep in mind is that I'll be explaining something in these videos and I'm forgetting that someone may not have the um, basis to, or an understanding of a base to a reference point, a point of reference is probably what I'm trying to say. So that's something I've got to watch out for as well. It could well pop up a few times in these videos while I'm doing this. I could be forgetting that someone doesn't have a basic understanding of a certain aspect. You know? Um, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it'd be good. I think it's going to be good. I, the, my my hope is that this video series, or the video series I'm planning on doing, all of them, will help boost the channel up. Um, and hopefully people will find it useful. Switches and push buttons. Um, yeah. Um, what can I do about those? I mean, debouncing was mentioned in one of the videos, and that's something I'm already thinking about with the microcontroller side of it. Um, oh, what do? Um, difference. I don't know what can I call that. Switches. Switches and buttons for now. Debouncing. Um. Yeah, exactly. There's lots of different perspectives, and sometimes there's many different ways of achieving the same result as well. I mean, it could be, you know, something you want to, I don't know, it could be anything you want to achieve, really. There's usually dozens of ways of achieving the same result, and each, all of them are equally as good and equally as relevant, and equally as acceptable. So, yeah, I mean, I, I could do one, something a certain way, and someone would go, oh, no, you don't do that, you want to do it like this. And both ways could be equally as good. Um, equally, you know, you can also have times where there's limitations about a certain way of doing something, and that maybe should be considered. You know, there's trade-offs. Um, anyway, right. I think I've had enough of today. I'm talking way too much. My throat's getting too sore, and I would like to record some more video later on um, to try and start chipping away at these. So I don't want to completely kill my throat. Um, yeah, so I'll probably I may well do another live stream next week. I expect I will. Well, so depends how I go with these videos. I mean, if I'm plodding along with these videos, okay, and getting the output done, which I need, um, then I'll probably do another live stream in a week's time. But uh, whilst I'm whilst I've got weekends free and not working weekends, I would like to do more live streams at the pro at the uh, same time. Get no ice down, I will do. Yeah, thanks, David. Um, certainly been a lot more talking than normal. <laughs> talking, waffling, same thing, I don't know. Tune into Dave. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to kill it. Okay, thanks, everyone. I'll catch you all maybe next week. We'll see if we go. Watch out for the stream popping up. Notification stuff. <laughs>